Ladies and gentlemen, man, man. it's the Uncovered Anomalies podcast. You know it. You love it. You listen to it. Hopefully you tell your friends about it. We really want you to do that. Uh, <laughs> this is episode 82. And yes. that is I have a need to know Adam. Hey, everybody. See, we're back like every week. Every week. Every yes. week. You come with a little bit. You try to give a little bit. No, I take it all because I am take it all tofer. <laughs> Uh, you you got some, I take it. I take it, I take it all. What is that accent? That sounds very familiar. No idea. Uh, I, just a fun idea that came <laughs> to my head as I was writing my name for the show. Nice. Well, take it all, Topher. I take, I, oh, yeah. You got one the podcast. I take all. I take all the podcast. Actually, that voice fits perfectly with your profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know. I always <laughs> imagine a voice like this. For the greys, <laughs> I want to take it all. See, because they're androids give or android like. Probe. Give me the probe out of your anus. Uh, <laughs> yes, I take it. I take it all. I take all of your anus. Oh, alien abductions are everywhere too, right? So yeah, man. Research going on with that. Um, there, there's some of my. I, I love, I love abduction uh, stories. It's they're they're great. They're a lot of fun. We did we covered several of them last week. Um, yeah. Before, with the Coronado group abduction, uh, but that was last week. Why don't that you tell us last week. what we're covering this week? All I know oh, is Operation yeah. Saucer out of Portugal. No, out of Brazil. Out of Portuguese. Brazil. It's Portuguese out of Brazil. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. So in Brazil, Brasilia. So yeah, uh, it's called Operation Saucer in English. Um, in Portuguese, it's called um, Opera- Operacio Prato. If I, I hope I said that right. No, that sounded um, pretty good to me. As but that someone, was in 19. Yeah. As someone who knows all accents, that sounded really good to me. <laughs> I try. Um, in 1977, so the uh, you know, in, in the 70s in Brazil, there was over two or three day period, um, the island of Colares, the indigenous population were being attacked by craft and light beams um, and abductions over over two or three years. So there was an official investigation by the Brazilian government. And we'll see, like in some articles, it was, it was pre-disclosure. And then there was after disclosure. They after, they actually released everything um, to the public a couple of years ago. So that's what's so cool about um, South American governments. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. They, they are you know, open about you. Well, somewhat open about uh, UFOs somewhat. and alien abductions. Um, there are some really uh, captivating, interesting stories that come out of not just Brazil, but South America as a whole. Um, yeah. But Brazil definitely has some really cool ones. I don't know if this is part of uh, the, the show today, but I still, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the town, but there was a fishing town. Oh yeah, Brazil. it is. Yeah. You sent me, Oh, was that a Brazil? I believe it was Brazil, where they were getting scooped up by fishing hooks. It was a fishing village, and the aliens used fishing hooks to, to scoop them up, which Ooh. is just absolutely bizarre. Is that? Oh, no, that's UK. You sent me another um, the case, alien abduction case from the UK, Avley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, know I, what you, I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah, I, I think last podcast covered that one as well. Uh, alien abduction scenarios are just absolutely, you know, so much fun to read and learn about. Um, it just sucks if you're the one being abducted. Though. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You're just completely helpless. There's <laughs> yeah. nothing you can do about it. It sucks. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. It's a complete nightmare <laughs> if you get abducted by aliens in like 99% of scenarios. Um, yeah. But holy hell is it fun to read about. Yeah, I definitely, because it's so strange. And, you know, there's no way that the ones who are doing the abducting want disclosure either. They want to remain secret and in the shadows. It's It's obvious. Yeah, well... You know, the one of the big theories I always hear about is how, um, you, you know, the whole the whole goal of aliens is to expand our consciousness. And yeah. if, if they make it an event where they land in the White House and come out and introduce themselves, that kind of ruins, uh, you know, people's perception of them. They, they want people to just use their own brains to, you know, expand their mind, not not told to expand their minds. 
uh, you know, which is why they do things in the dark, in secret, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. According, and, according to that theory. Right. And that people have to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So here's an article from 2021 titled Evidence of an Alien Attack, the Colaris Case, Brazil, 1977. And here are some pictures they have. She's got some puncture wounds here. Ooh. There's a there's a scoop skin, huh? How they scoop mm -hmm. the skin. Melon baller. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just reading that really quick. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but um, yeah, Brazil, the Bra the South American governments as a whole, they have, you know they yeah. on the you know they they will outwardly state that they believe in, in UFOs. Yes. In the alien. government of Brazil, I think in 1954 mm -hmm. or something officially said that these are extraterrestrials or non-human. Yeah. So do you remember, and I believe we've touched on this on the show, there was uh, a UFO that was supposedly shot down over Brazil. And it mm -hmm. was, I remember it was all over Reddit and all over the internet and it got scrubbed so oh quick. that one yeah you can't even like people had videos of it on their phones you know posting the youtube whole internet got scrubbed of it, of it within days. i remember when that happened it was live on reddit and yeah. all these locals were sending in videos and um, and no one even talks about it anymore it's no not... it must be on the wayback machine well, you'd have to do some digging but yeah 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 all right so this uh, so in 1977 on the island of colaris in brazil Located at the mouth of the Amazon River, better known as the Amazon Delta, its inhabitants began to report a large number of sightings of lights of various forms. Little by little, these unknown lights came more and more in contact with the residents of the area, getting to know uh, reports of lights that visited them at dawn, crossing their ceilings and illuminating parts of their bodies. It's weird because that, that most recent interview with Ross Coulter, that guy talks about these lights. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar. Um, I haven't read through this this page. Uh, but the story I'm I'm thinking about is the American uh, UFOologists that went down to go, um, you know, research this. They uh -huh. figured out from locals that if you painted the roof of your car, I believe it was red, white, and yellow, um, the aliens were more likely to get pay you a visit if you're driving on a night road. What? Yeah. The that's crazy. So wait, what were the colors? Red, white, and yellow? I'm not 100% yeah, but I'm not 100% sure that's what it huh. was. But it, it had to do with those were the lights that the UFOs were projecting. And yeah. so they decided to, you know, paint their cars and find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. So they must be, I mean, they're obviously inte intelligently controlled. Mm -hmm. Or right, so sexually aroused by colors. <laughs> Aren't we Could all? Go either way. Are we all? <laughs> no. Well, what do you think red lipstick is? <laughs> oh shit! All right, all right. right. Well, <laughs> damn. More right, of a, I'm more of a black lipstick guy myself, <laughs> like those goth girls. Oh, I get that. I get that. All right, moving on. Yeah, please two months. Move on. Two months had already passed, plagued by hundreds of witnesses who claimed to have been pursued and attacked by lights in the sky, which seemed to want to kidnap them. There you go, aroused. Many of the victims. <laughs> reported that when these lights came into contact with their bare skin, they could feel their bodies become paralyzed. They began to feel burns in the illuminated areas and had the sensation as if they were sucking their blood. Blood, blood, blood. Yeah, the, the burns uh, from UFOs, that's pretty common. Yeah, but sucking their blood, that's a new one, huh? Yeah, that's, that's a new one for sure. Uh, sometime after these incidents, the cases began to become more tragic, said the director of health of the aforementioned island. Dr. Wallade began to treat the victims, being able to, to realize that the wounds were serious burns with small holes. Oh, Jesus. Um, similar to those that remain in the body as a result of an injection. These burns also began to turn black, indicating death of the skin. But the strangest thing is that this almost always happened 10 minutes after exposure to the lights, hmm. uh, while no normal burns take around 96 hours to present this behavior. The sensation of suck suck. <laughs> uh, that's chupa chupa, by the way. Oh, really? I, I believe so. That's what chupa chupa means. A suck suck. 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 Okay. Or blood uh, sucking manifested by several victims was confirmed by medical studies that determined anemia in these people, evidently Whoa. caused by blood loss. Wow. That's nuts. 
Yeah, it is nuts. That quick, too? They just, like, sucked out the blood really quick? I mean, it, it, it makes sense, right, from an alien perspective. You want a quick yeah. way to extract uh, material. <laughs> and done. <laughs> we, we seriously are just an own species. I mean, when the more we look into this, it's like there's no, just no regard for humans at all. Yeah. No, uh, we're, we're monkeys at the zoo. Yeah, 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 or whatever reason they're using us for. Um, two of the cases treated treated by Dr. Wellade ended in death, and that, according to forensics, reported was of unknown origin. Until then, the doctor was skeptical of this type of phenomenon and adduced the causes of death due to cardiac arrest as a consequence of the mass hysteria, of course, that she uh -huh. thought was being experienced on the island. But doctor, he would have to experience a terrifying case for his hand. This must be like translated. It, yeah, it seems like it's translated because I don't think adduced is a word, but deduced right. makes make sense in this context. Now, so because of mass hysteria is I, why okay. they died. I was just about to bring this up. What are your thoughts on mass hysteria? Because I mean, it, it, it certainly, to me, it exists. Yes, um, for sure. I remember in the, the 90s, everyone was afraid of satanic cults, which, as far as I can tell, none were ever found. But I do right. remember hearing about them as a kid. Yeah. Um, and everyone was really freaked out by it. Um, but do you think mass hysteria is the reason people see UFOs and all this nonsense? No. I mean, I don't think mass hysteria will make you hallucinate something physical or you know, something physically happening to you. I mean, mass hysteria will, will hallucinate, make you hallucinate something or a fear that's irrational of something that's not there. Um, but it's a, definitely a real thing, mass hysteria. But this guy is, a, is this guy is saying it made them die. Now, would it make them die? No. You know, the thing is, yeah. you can have mass hysteria like in a church or some, somewhere localized where many people are together experiencing something. Um, but yeah, once you're taken out of that situation, I would think you wouldn't have that hysteria anymore. I don't know. I could be wrong. No, I'm 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 right there with you. It's just weird that he was, especially in Brazil. You'd think he'd be more open. Right. Yeah. That's it's a bizarre situation. Uh, so being around five in the afternoon, days after the deaths of these two people, the doctor witnessed that a woman was passed out on the road. Uh, which had been a victim of those lights. After helping her, everyone, including the doctor, witnessed a strange metallic and luminous object in the shape of a truncated cone, huh. which wandered over the town, revealing inside two humano humanoid beings, uh, 1.2 or 1.3 meters high, approximately. That's like a foot tall? Wait, what? No, no, no. Uh, a meter? meter is three feet. Oh, yeah, three. Yeah, so, yeah. So, three foot something. Mm-hmm. So tiny, small, small grays. What the hell? This is small, aggressive grays. <laughs> it's like suck the blood. No, they take it all. <laughs> exactly. So wait, can we open this picture? I'm trying to uh, even decipher what that picture is. Is that the UFO? Let's yeah. And this is from the. It looks like uh something you'd put in your car, like a kerosene thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't data data sets. That is huh. pretty bizarre. Yeah, if I saw that floating around, I'd be weirded out. And look at them. They're supposed to be in here. Yeah. How bizarre like, is uh, that? Oh, wow. That is that is really bizarre. <laughs> Imagine seeing that I with know. tiny beings inside. I mean, I love it. Uh, yeah. I, that's super, because it is super weird, and I love the super weird, but because it doesn't look like a UFO. No. I mean, it looks like uh, like a muffler. <laughs> Yeah, it does. I'm a, I'm a for that's that's uh, upside. Yeah, it's side up, floating around <laughs> with two beings inside. <laughs> so I'm thinking. I guess they'll suck up the blood from here. Um, I mean, who knows? I think I think it's I think it's impossible to try and decipher what the hell the UFOs, you know, different parts, what their purposes are. Uh, all right, I'm convinced it's mass hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so wait. Yeah, you read that. Um, due to the seriousness of these cases, Dr. Willade ca contacted the mayor of the city to request the Air Force to inspect the area and rid the town of these attacks. All right, so something obviously is happening, seriously. However, 
Only 90 days later, a contingent of soldiers arrived in Colaris, so three months later, but it had already been almost abandoned due to the terror aroused in the residents at the fateful events. As is typical, the military pressured Dr. Willade to declare that the Colaris case was a product of mass hysteria, to which she flatly refused. Good for her. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you, Doctor. Well done, Willade. So that was a good uh, introduction to it. Um, and then this is how the investigation by the Air Force in the area began. And as a curious note, the investigation was called Operation Saucer. Operation de Saucer. Yeah, there you go. Uh, during the long investigation carried out by Air Force personnel led by Commander Uranga Holanda mm. Lima. Wow, that's a hell of a name. Uh, <laughs> it was possible to capture and gather highly important materials such as photos of luminous objects in the sky, sketches of the sightings that clearly showed objects in the, in the shape of saucers and their characteristics as well as their location. But said material was declared confidential and archived by mm-hmm. the government of Brazil. Mm-hmm. Initially, uh, Commander Lima was highly skeptical of the issue and tried to demystify the whole Colaris, Col- Colaris affair. However, the commander witnessed several events and even a third type of contact, which had an instantaneous anti-skeptic effect on him. So this guy Oh, anti-skeptic. In, I thought it was antiseptic. No, this guy came in believing it was mass hysteria and he witnessed something that was so uh, wow. wild he became a believer so here are some pictures of i guess official pictures damn that is weird that looks like a that snake sperm. Arm. yeah I mean, yeah definitely sperm here yeah very weird. bizarre i guess this is where this they're showing there's an image showing where the where the craft came in turned around and left same thing mm-hmm. wow i wonder if there's a base there Polaris. Operation Saucer ended up being archived and classified as inconsistent due to the high number of possible reasons uh, why this phenomenon uh, could have occurred. <laughs> oh, so if there's multiple reasons something could have occurred, then, you know, sorry. Uh, it's, <laughs> it, it's a mystery. <laughs> it's Just a mystery. Don't say what you're... Yeah, it's like when people were like, you know, you know dying suddenly during those <laughs> Di- years. Yeah, died. It's everything except, right. except that, yeah. There's too many reasons. Um, oh, he, he's a, yeah. So he, a few years later, the retired commander, Holanda Lima, contacted the Brazilian ufologist Adimer, Adimar sorry, Givard, editor of UFO Magazine Brazil, and they met. This interview had the objective of Holanda to deliver the truth of the events that occurred in Colaris before he died, as he stated. So this is how Holanda delivers her version of events. Clearly, recounting the sightings of lights that she had witnessed and a smaller encounter with one of those supposed alien beings. Woo! I didn't know that. Um, Of course. And they they killed the commander. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) What a surprise, (laughs) huh? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Huge huge surprise. He committed suicide by... um, He had two bullet holes in the back of his head and he was hanging from a rope. Uh, total, oh yeah, total suicide. Definitely, definitely suicide. I, I would do that if I was. That, if I was that, that's that's not in the article for those of you just listening. I, I but you know, <laughs> you know how. Yeah, suicide. but however, and it, what's in the article is he supposedly committed suicide. But um, what many believe, and the writer um, concludes, even though he said include concludes himself, <laughs> uh, is that there were external agents that made a murder look like a suicide. Yeah, I mean, is there a government? on this planet that doesn't kill their own citizens and make it look like suicide? No, I don't think so. I'm, no. ama- I'm just amazed they didn't say JFK was eating bullets or something and, you know, <laughs> d- died by eating a bullet on accident. Right, yeah, it was, it was lead poisoning from eating bullets. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> he had his mind blown by how tasty the bullets were. <laughs> oh, probably Marilyn disguised him in something. <laughs> oh, Marilyn. Oh, maybe okay, they, wait, I'm not going to go they, there. I'm not... And then they killed her afterwards, too. <laughs> yeah, Poor yeah. Well, Marilyn, the most beautiful woman that ever existed. Well, she's iconic, right? I mean, she's timeless. She's She lives forever. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so next is the dirty war was present. So although there was there were valuable testimonies and photos. Oh, uh, wait, just before I continue, there was something oh. else I wanted to say. Um, about oh, was it about Brazil? Marilyn Monroe? 
Oh. No, no, about uh, the Brazilian government and and this subject, like how open they are. Um, like they have close relationships with with the journalists, and um, they let them um, let them know what they're doing. The only thing that's classified now, listen to this, that they won't ever say is any relationship with the U.S. government and what the U.S. government does in the with these cases. Oh, weird. Everything else is open though. How weird. How, how it's funny how that works. I know, right? So, like, we're the only ones, the free United States. And I'm sure have. the I'm sure the U.S. government is there just helping out and being good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they didn't they didn't take anything. What do you think happens when they probably come and like, all right, guys, listen, we've been dealing with this for for two decades or whatever. You need our expertise, so you know we'll help you with this. We'll just take I, everything. I, I think it's the same thing that happens every time in countries like this is where someone gets someone in power gets pulled into a back room and they're shown not to bring up JFK again. They're shown a assassination. They're, they're shown the assassination assassination of JFK from a different angle uh, where the, the shooter turns around and gives a peace sign to the camera. Um, and they say, Down. and you know, and then they say, well, if you have any questions, you can just go, go ahead and ask Kennedy. And they go, yeah, sure. Whatever you want. We'll, you know, we'll help you out. U S government. It's got to be something like that. So, I mean, yeah, there's so many meetings that they go in and get whatever they want out of those meetings. And they're really quick. And we know they have nothing. So it's weird. You know, and, and weirdly enough, um, the people that pull them in the back room have weird little hats on the you know top. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Continuing here, a large part of the interest in having the issue decatalogued. This is, they're saying the, the, the Brazilian Air Force decatalogued um, supposedly the, the report. Uh, came from the Brazilian Air Force and from the government itself. The various psychosocial campaigns that surrounded the event, ranging from mass hysterics, urban legends, and psychological problems of Commander Holanda. So now they're saying she has psychological problems. Achieved the main objective of those cover-ups of the truth, thus turning an evidently fact into an enigmatic fact to this day. Uh, no, uh, uh, fiction, probably they say, to this day. All right, so... What happened after this, because this is in 2021, the Brazilian government did release the papers. And this guy, and he, run, he runs Brazilians, uh, Brazil's UFO magazine. It's huge. It's still in print. It's, I think he's been running it for 30 years or something. So this guy is really close to the Brazilian government, and they trust him with information. Um, because he's close to them. He's developed contacts. He's developed relationships. And, you know, that's how things work in normal human societies. So here, George Knapp interviews him. He talks about many things, not just uh, this event. But I did stop it at the nice. Operation Saucer. All right. And well, I think, listen. Yeah, yeah, he goes through. Well, actually, I'm listening to this part. So, yeah, let's listen. Harmed by interactions with whatever these things are, right? Right. It happened in 1977, and in, few in a few months of 76, and a few months in 78. People were being attacked, George. People were being attacked by balls of light that came from the sky, sometimes came through the trees, in a particular area called the island of Polaris, which is by the Amazon River. It's 100 kilometers from the very well-populated city of Belém in the state of Pará. And these people were attacked by hundreds. It were hundreds of people that were attacked. And people were fleeing. They are escaping from that situation by moving to other places of the state. So only like 10% of the population remained. And at some point, the government decided to interfere, to do something about it. And it asked the Brazilian Air Force, which has a big base in Belém, to do something. And the Brazilian Air Force, at the first aerial regional command in Berlin, they assembled, assembled a team of men, 30 to 40 men, heavily equipped to investigate those lights. It was called Operation Saucer, which is the largest military mission that we have knowledge in the world to investigate those cases. It stayed, the operation software man he stayed at that location for, for four months, wow. from September to December 1977. And they were able 
to make over 500 photos of the objects, 500 photos, and 16 uh, hours of film. Film, not videos, because there were not videos in 1997, but Super 8 and Super 16 millimeters. And this material, from these materials, like two to 300 photos were declassified and are at National Archives in not one single second of the film were declassified yet. This is how we're going bold again after the pandemic with our movement UFOs, freedom of information now to ask precisely for those uh, pieces of evidences. All right, so the videos and pictures have not been declassified, but the report has. But yeah, he's still working on it, um, it seems. So, but of course they would not, because that'll be evidence. Yeah, right? of yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now there's still the debunkers out there saying, well, where's the evidence? And they just don't see how it's always uh, withheld from us. Right. I mean, the game is rigged. I hope, you know, most people see that part at least. Yeah, it's so rigged. All right, let's see what else he says. And beside that, the operation also together, like they produced 2,000 pages of reports of UFO sightings and talking to the witnesses, they collected re reports as well more than the, 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 the reports made by the military. And over a thousand of those pages were also uh, released, declassified in the National Archives. That's a spectacular case. That really happened. And the government did investigate. And people really were harmed. Was anyone killed, do you know? Four people were killed. And also animals, like chicken, cocks, were attacked, goats, and they all died instantly. Uh, I have been investigating this case for quite a long time, including it, it happened in 1977. 20 years later, I was in a TV show, which is largely seen on Sunday's night in Brazil. And I was talking about the Operation Saucer with the documents that I received anonymously. And then in the morning of Monday, just a few hours after the program, the very commander of the Operation Saucer, Colonel Wiranje Bolivar Soares Nogueira de Holanda Lima, called me at my office to congratulate me for what I was doing, informing the society about the Operation Saucer. I was the one who revealed its existence. And that man decided to open his heart to me. And he said, AJ, I couldn't meet you in the past when you looked for him at in Brasilia and in Rio. But now I'm disconnected from the Air Force. I no longer belong to the Air Force. And if you want to talk about the source again, come to my house and we speak freely. You can. Is he he's talking about Holanda, the one we just reported about? I think so. Lima, right? Lima, yeah. All right. So she she or I think it's a he. It's, it's he, I believe. It's a he. All right. So what to him? The uh, the psychiatrist uh, who reported to uh, Lima was a oops. she. Oh, okay. So I guess yeah, she entrusted him, and she's and she. Or, oh yeah, and then or he is he entrusted um, AJ, and he's going to tell him what happened. Right. So wait, but he he went in believing it's mass hysteria, or they want, or that was his mission to prove it was mass hysteria. I just think um, he's a military guy, and so yeah, you know, no nonsense. That's probably just what I don't think he was. I, I'm not. I mean, I don't know. I'm. I'm guessing here, but I don't. It's think the default. Was, yeah, that's just the default. Exactly. Yeah. Record. You can do whatever you want. And I went to Rio with my co-editor, and we did a very long interview with this gentleman. We had a very fresh memory of the facts. He included told me that he had an encounter with a, an occupant of a large UFO. Whoa. A large UFO. It was by the, the, the middle of December 1977. Olanda, the commander, with one of his men, were in a small boat on the southern area of the island. When they were about to leave to the camping on the northern area of the, the island, they saw an object coming down. 
it was a cylinder-like object with almost a hundred meters wow. in height that almost touched ground on the other bank of the river. But it didn't. It, it stayed like five meters or so from the ground. It didn't touch down. And so the Hollanda and his men was disturbed. What the hell is that? My God. And then they saw from the upper part, the top part of that object, a door was open and a, a humanoid figure, just like a human being coming down, floating in the air. <laughs> it had two legs, two arms, a, a body, a neck, and, and a face. Were, were dressed in a, a suit, of, a white suit, and a helmet like the, those helmets that the bikers use <laughs> with a, a, a dark visor. And he floated down until he came close, like a few meters from the boat to where Holanda and his men were. But no communication was made, nothing was made, right. no gesticulation like a high or telepathic or something, nothing. Then the creature went back by the same path entered that, that, that big UFO, which just went up and up and disappeared. What is the point of that? I mean, so, okay, this whole dramatic landing, you get out from the door, you float all the way down, you're dressed like the guy says he's dressed, and nothing, no high, no nothing. Well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows, man? <laughs> maybe, but it goes it goes back to our conversation we were having earlier. I mean, maybe it's just because they want people to question reality. Yeah, I could it, just it's for just him. it's literally just to mess with people. You're right, and if that guy had the beliefs that it's all mass hysteria, it could be just for that. Then, like, yeah. okay, we'll show you mass hysteria. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you see something that weird. What the hell are you supposed? You don't just go. Well, now I've got mass hysteria. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. What a bizarre, what a bizarre encounter. Mm -hmm. as, yeah. Now, this is fascinating. This is what caused the Finnish operation Salter, mm -hmm. Salter. What is it about Brazil that attracts so much to this attention of whatever these things are? Because as I said, you have a long history in that country of very dramatic incidents. And who knows what goes on out in settlements and villages in the Amazon that you'd never hear about? Yes. Well, I have, I have been specializing in investigating in the Amazon, the, the several areas of the Amazon. Um, I fly to Manaus or to Belém. I take a car. I go to the fastest city that I can reach by the river. There I rent a boat with a guy driving the boat. And we go further and further nice. inside the jungle. And I start talking to families that live isolated from society, that barely have a radio. I talk to them. And I go into communities, very poor, very humble communities. And I talk to them. I ask them if they have seen something strange. And you will be shocked to see, <laughs> if I tell you, that out of 10, 10 people have experiences. <laughs> now, they see objects that they call a castle or something like that come from inside the Amazon River without making any waves and going up. They shoot at the objects sometimes or they you just... <laughs> Uh, get amazed by the beauty of these objects, the lights that are surrounding all over the objects. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to hear what they have to say. And they are very simple. They used to connect or to compare what they saw with what they know. So they give names to, to the object that they see according to their beliefs, according to their knowledge of Small knowledge, knowledge of of the world itself. Itself. Some of yeah, it's it's all about perspective. You know, we've said that before. Like mm -hmm. whatever is in our religious books as well could be the exact same thing. 
um, that whoever's witnessing it is trying to relay the data in something that that's that that, that the people living there can relate to. Exactly. Yep. Right. Yep. 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 So yeah, it's I mean, the same thing. We're we're half the phenomena apparently. So whatever you bring into it, that's what you're getting. So I guess this is one of the uh, pictures. Yikes. Turn your attention to your body and release any... Ten oh, what's this? Never mind. <laughs> yeah, so... Operation Brazil. Prato. Brazilian Air Force UFO photographs and details about the occupants inside them. Look at that burning. It's definitely a balloon. Operation Saucer. Um, yeah, so in 2004, the Brazilian Air Force released official documents pertaining to Operation Operação Prato. The documents detail what many citizens and the military witnessed at the time. Um, let's see if we can see anything from the documents. Because they're all in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. All right, we saw this one, actually, with that weird-looking... Yeah, that was the muffler we were looking at earlier. Oh, this is Dr... Well, aid. That's right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. They believe blood was being sucked. All right. Exactly. Here's this picture. image. Yeah, picture of the where the blood sucking was taken out of the patient, the victim. <laughs> that is so nuts. And they they say they turned black, right? Yeah. So this is Colonel Holanda, the guy who apparently committed suicide, but also had that interview with mm -hmm. AJ. Um, he was the commander of Operation Saucer. According to him, Brazilian Air Force detected nine forms of objects. He classified them as probes and crafts that were shaped like flying saucers, <laughs> and then all reports went to Comar 1 Air Force Base, then to Brasilia. Uh, he himself went public and described incidents with witnessed by the military while investigating for example, at a distance of 70 meters from the vessel where they were one night, the said object in the shape of an American football had been photographed and filmed by the military. It had little windows on it, and he said it was approximately 500 feet long. Wow. Approximately the size of two Boeing 747 airplanes. Yeah, and that was in the 70s, guys. Damn. In August 1997, editor of the popular UFO magazine in Brazil... AJ yep. Gerard, who we just saw, received a call from Helenda. Yeah, Helenda wanted to schedule an interview. Below is a picture of that interview where Helenda revealed more details about the operation. Now, so what? They're saying this guy had like psychological problems and then committed suicide, right? Basically. Yeah, he, he got a real rough case of uh, mass hysteria. <laughs> yeah, and of course, this guy's wearing the X Files shirt. Oh, come on, UFO researchers, do a little I bit know. better. I mean, it does not help. <laughs> no, it does not. Oh, the, wow. this interview was significant because all the soldiers who participated in Operation Saucer are now dead. At the time of this particular interview in 1997, Holanda was the last one alive. I could not find details regarding the deaths of all of the other soldiers involved. Whoa. Because, you know, I did... When he was talking... because. That whole like occupant thing, it was him and, a, and another soldier. And in my head, I was like, Oh, you know, someone should ask that other soldier. Well, he's dead. Um, so yeah, I mean, we we just heard so same thing here. Um, he revealed that there were more than 500 photographs. Yeah, we heard that 16 hours of video footage and 2,000 page pile of reports. Oh, wait a minute. Were you gone? Hmm? What happened? What do you mean? Um, yeah, I'm going to pause it. Yeah, we, we heard from that. I guess that's what he looked like. Or... There they are. Small grays. I mean, looks identical to what everyone else has seen coming out of these craft. Think of that. The, the eyes are a little bit different. I mean, usually people talk about big old eyes. Bigger ones. Yeah. Wearing a kind of tight He's fitting got a babushka on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So unfortunately, just two months. Oh after my this god, he was he was found hanging from his bedroom. I made a oh, joke earlier. How did you do that? Because you know just how so stupid obvious. they are. It's yeah. so obvious how they kill people. 
Oh my god. According to Gerard, this wasn't his first suicide attempt. Ugh, I don't know. Really? This wasn't his first. So what? How did how he fail Two before? I mean, after the interview. Wow! Wow! Uh, you know, it's got to be the phenomenon too, not just government. You know, I think there's a big part. Um, when, once you like come to terms with the fact that reality, as you know it, is completely false. Yeah, that ha- that does have to you know mess with some yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, oh yes, and and you know, there's movies about that too. You know? Especially in you know, I, I if I'm not you know completely in the wrong here, I think Brazil is a very um, religious part of the world. Yeah, and sure. and basically having your religion, um, I was going to say crucified, and then I realized how terrible. <laughs> uh, well, to phrase that pun was, phrase. not intended. Yeah, I, I think having your religion completely broken in front of your eyes, I think that does, you know, tend to mess with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Which is why they won't really disclose officially. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's what they say anyway. Right. So here are other, from the, from the disclosed documents, I guess they had a craft looking like this, where it looks metallic, illuminating some lights and then at the bottom here yeah it looks like a looks like a top yeah like one that you spin <clears throat> except without the handle on top um articles from 1977 yeah so, i mean this was in newspapers this was all over the place this story oh yeah and there's that there's showing this picture here landing uh, of objects were also reported from the incident so they they actually if you look at that I mean yeah it was a huge investigation mm-hmm. they went into the fields they measured how uh, how deep the indents are that's really cool yeah um, I I there's one U S UFO guy who's all about indents and I can't remember his name but the, obviously that's a really important part of UFO you know research yeah <clears throat> there's some other images that they captured yeah very very bizarre i don't even know how to just i mean obviously oval shape but those top two yeah it's got a little thing hanging i mean i don't even know how to describe that like the pac-man ghost or something yeah a little bit <laughs> but i mean it's but it's intense light it looks like it's melting in a way mm-hmm. but yeah very bright yeah and we saw this that line again with the two beings in there <laughs> imagine seeing that I don't know if I would laugh or. I, well, that's I'm I'm laughing because who's who's driving? I'm actually going go left, go left. No, I want to go right. I want to go right. Go left. Especially if they're meter high. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, humans are still categorizing these events as demonic, angelic, and all sorts of things. The truth yeah. is, we could be way off, and perhaps we're not ready to find out right now what is really going on. If I was, this is the, the author, if I was a being from somewhere else and was perceived as something I wasn't by the masses, I wouldn't really want to interact to, to interact openly with them. A lot of truth there. Yeah. I mean, obviously, oh, wait, we've we've talked about that picture before. Yeah. That, that's talking yeah. about the one over, where was that? It wasn't Germany. Somewhere in Germany, I think. Was it Germany? Wait. Nuremberg. Yeah, yeah. Nuremberg. It was Germany. Of course, Nuremberg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's we could do I don't know if there's enough actual content. We could do a deep dive on the Nuremberg incident. Yeah, yeah, I think there is. I mean, it's literally just, you know, all the paintings of what happened that day because it was so long ago. Um Yeah, actually one uh new kind of theory that I've been letting bounce around my head. Mm-hmm. Um you, you know, it, it's it's not Huh, how do I even begin to describe this? Okay, picture you are in a, a house, right, with a lot of rooms, or all, all the rooms are touching each other, you know, and, yeah. and but the the walls are kind of soft, so you can push your way into the room mm-hmm. next to you. And I'm, okay. one, I'm I'm starting to wonder if like when we see aliens or ghosts or yetis or Sasquatch or I don't know some unfathomable thing it's whatever entity is in the next room over kind of poking their fingers through the wall and those little fingers are what we're seeing so we're not getting the full picture 
we you know you see an alien you see a ghost but it's just a finger of the of the whole thing. right yeah what's What's being shown here yeah it's a depiction of what in this reality right yeah it could be something something entirely different and that's why it doesn't make any sense to us because we don't have we're not you know everyone wants to say oh they're aliens from another planet that are landing here and they want to do tests on us or yada 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 but you know you can't possibly know that because all you're seeing are the tips of fingers hopefully that doesn't sound too too wacko <laughs> too, too wooey wooey well man, especially I, when it's just stuff like this where it just it just doesn't make any sense right that it even exists you know yeah and it needs our blood <laughs> but th- and again, but that doesn't make any that again doesn't make any sense. But that's that's part of it. I, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know. I know exactly what you're trying to say. It's just hard to put in words, too. Yeah. Crazy pictures. Yeah. Very well, that was a definitely. It's a cool case. There's a lot going on in Brazil. Um, and even even recently, this guy. What's his name? I was. They should put his name in the in the title at least. Um, he's a Brazilian researcher. Oh, Ronnie Vernet or Vernet. Cool. He, yeah, he went to Brazil recently, and of course, very remote Amazon uh, um, in the Amazon, and he went and set up a whole station to record what these these natives are seeing. So he set up cameras. He he got a Starlink link or account. Um, he has a bunch of sensors they set up also. So he did a, uh, an interview with Ross Coulthard, and we can watch some of the cool videos they took. Nice. And it's mostly lights also. Yeah. And not, and not big. So it's very similar to what happened in 1977. It's also, um, if you remember back to Skinwalker Ranch, that was what the family was seeing on the ranch all the time. It's just little like soccer ball sized yeah. uh, balls full of light floating around. So maybe those are the drones. Who knows, or, man? Maybe it's just whoever. the fingernail. Or just small beings inside. <laughs> yeah, real small ones. <laughs> the the ball fire was gone. So this was the most common witness there. Okay, here's the million dollar question, Ronnie. Did you see those anomalous orange yellowy balls? Yes. Uh the first observation was uh uh, on a fair, not far, not not too close, but a far uh, orange blinking. It was blinking a very strong orange and a very strong yellow. Uh, it was going around, literally around all the village. So we observe like at 36 degrees, this object always in the level of the trees. It's important to say that it's not something that was far away in the space, far away in the air. These lights are at the, at the maximum at the top of the tree level. It's the height that they, they fly there. So it was going around, around, around all the village, almost a tree six around the village, and enter it inside the forest. And this was the first photo that I took with my equipment. So it's like the same. So- it's like the other pictures we saw. It's just like a really bright, irregularly shaped you know, craft. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. It, again, maybe it's craft, maybe it's a little ball light. Who, who knows? So what we're looking at here is a photograph of the object that you personally shot with your camera. Yes, I was with my, at this night I was not with but the station built yet. I was only with my camera and with my cell phone. Uh, that was together uh, with SSR that I plug my binoculars to give more zoom, to give more detail. So this was the equipment that I use it. So talk me through what we're seeing. Yes, it was uh, like a sphere, an orange sphere that uh, the light was gone and again started to blink in a strong yellow. And this becomes again, 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 orange and yellow, orange, yellow. And this light going, going, going straight away, very low on, on the top tree level and going inside the forest. So this was my the first observation of the UAP. 
And in these interviews, I asked people uh, before I started observation, the first day, where these objects are most seen, where they are going, from where they are going, where they are coming, where they are uh, going out. Can you explain the directions where this, this phenomena is more often seen? And all of them, almost all of them, was certainly that was a specific direction. It was to the west direction from the village, looking at the from the village, inside the village. And I started to investigate that direction, start to observe that direction. And these object, objects that I saw in the second night went exactly, entered exactly in that direction where the people was telling me that the lights were going in and out. So what's right, so obviously not extraterrestrial, something terrestrial to that. What makes you say that? Well, he says that they, they come and they come and go from the exact same direction um, and it's in the jungle. And then what the people were saying before, if you remember from the other interview with uh, that AJ Gerard, he was saying that they come up from the Amazon River and then they take off. So it just and especially that's been so long now, what, with 2024 and that these things have been happening for so long. So it seems something that's just there, mm -hmm. not from outside. The object was here. My journey was like two meters, at maximum two meters to five meters high. So I was looking directly. Then I was looking the the red light from the, the phenomenon, orange light of the red light. I was looking the green light from my drone. And I had complete Whoa. vision. And I started to get the drone camera to look down, look up, look to the sides. And it was, it was not possible to see this object. There was no way that could be possible that my drone was not uh, filming this object because I was seeing it with my, my, my eyes. It was very clear. The, the red light, the orange light was very strong. And uh, it was impossible to me. The object was static, was not moving. It was impossible to me to film the, this object with my drone. Wow. You realize what... So stealth also. Top three level, going, going, going very slow, no now, no noise. And I try to, I, I heard, I, I run to, to the equipment. I try to, to put the camera in the position, but they were not successful because the object immediately goes down inside the forest. And that's the behavior, common behavior. The, the object, uh, uh, every time he, he goes down and, and literally en enter the, the trees in the forest, inside the forest. Weird. So, Passed like 30 minutes, came something very, very bizarre that I never witnessed before. It was uh, I, what I could describe better. It was like uh, aurora, like uh, uh, aurora, the, the natural phenomenon. And this aurora was not green, was not red. It was like uh, very white, very dense, like a luminous fog, as I could describe. It was forming like a 3D shape in the shape of a hand, like this, this form. It was, I'm seeing, in the shape. It's like, you're imagine kidding. like a, a, yes. Imagine you're like you're a actually seeing shape. a hand? A hand, yes, a hand, like this. Wow. Like pointing very, very, that way. And imagine like the drone show that people do today, where they put a lot of drones in the air and the drones form a 3D shape, a figure shape. But imagine this, not with drones, imagine this with a fog, a, a luminous fog, not a, a simple fog, but a very, very bright luminous fog, a forming, plasma. becoming denser, 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 very close to us, like, a, don't know, like a one mile at, at the at maximum range. Uh, it was forming like a hand like this, like point, maybe pointing this. Did you, did, did you get imagery of this, Ronnie? Yes, immediately I run into the equipment. I put the motorized camera toward this. I put the zoom with, if it, to see if it's something behind that, but was simply a, a fog, a luminous fog. And this is the equipment. We don't see in the equipment what I was seeing in the, in the, in the, in the with my eyes. But you. Yeah, I mean, doesn't that prove like we're half the phenomenon too? Like, this is the second time he says that he sees it with his eyes. He actually. But his equipment cannot capture it. Yeah, I mean, and that's uh, it. 
it's used as a convenient excuse by skeptics to say, oh, you can't, you know, if you can't capture on film, it's not real. But for whatever reason, this phenomenon does, it, it chooses when and how and where to be captured. Right. Um, and it who seems like, yeah. And who, um, one thing he keeps talking about is luminous fog. Uh, we kind of, we've talked a lot about that last week with the abductees of Coronado. Um, yeah. when they were describing the light in their room, luminous fog. <clears throat> so that, that, that might be like a plasma phenomenon because something that's what plasma looks like. Mm -hmm. All right, so this hand is really weird. You see uh, a form like that, like this one that I'm saying. And so you do see one you of do them, see the hand. Like a, not exactly like I'm describing, but you see the contours. The contour, but we don't see if you get the image only of the camera and they give you rods, what you're seeing here, you're not seeing a hand. Right. I can be honest about it. You cannot see a hand. But uh, you can see some strange form and this strange fog moving. Uh, I put the zoom. It was it was not possible to see anything with the zoom, so I put the zoom out, and this fog started to move towards the forest, like going deep, deep, deep in the forest. And something impressive. The, I, I let one indigenous, two indigenous boys outside and say, observe everything, take notes. What are you seeing with your own eyes? And the boy said to me that when he was observing, he saw this, uh, the, this phenomenon like pointing towards the forest. And it's crazy because the, the, the point that it was pointing, this virtual hand or something like that, <laughs> it was and enter it exactly where the phenomena goes in and out every night. So it was like pointing for us, maybe, interpretation. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, right. They want their blood, you know. And they're like, all right, come over here, human. Look, we're pointing <laughs> right here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exactly like you walk into a strange warehouse and there's a big button that says, don't push this button. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And they know how we are. Like, uh -huh. Oh, look, it's pointing. Let's go. <laughs> That's so bizarre, though. Very bizarre. Uh, let's see what other videos he's got. He's got a cool one at the end. Oh, yeah, this one. Definitely watch the entire interview, though. Yeah. And as always, yes, you, dear listener, can find these videos, everything we talk about on all of these shows. You can find it in the show notes. Absolutely. Uh, the, the indigenous say that they believe they have, that in their culture that they ha we have the beings of the forest. And the great thing is that Whoa. the direction that these lights are coming in and out, I asked the indigenous, indigenous leader, what do you have here? You have a river, you have a water body, what do you have in this direction? Oh, this is the direction exactly of the Samauma. The Samauma is the sacred tree of the Amazon. In the indigenous culture, the Samauma is a portal where beings from the forest come in and out. And when he talked to me about that, I was shocked because I was never imagining an answer like that, that exactly pointing direction where the, the phenomena is going down, literally entering the forest, in the, in the exactly direction where the Samauma is located. Did, did you get a picture or imagery of the Samauma tree, the sacred tree that he was talking about? Yes, I went there. It's wow. prohibited to people to visit at night. They don't permit that because they say that could cause bad things for, for you hmm. because their habit is bad and good spirits. So I asked him, oh, I want to go there and stay there at the night and wait for the phenomenon. He said, no, no way. I cannot permit it. It's prohibited in my culture. Huh. And they only can go there. Of course, it's per it's you mean he, it's prohibited in his culture, but it makes sense if that thing is causing causing yeah, that. It totally makes sense. Yeah, so it's a portal of they say beings to enter our reality. I, I, once again, I mean, this is Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, yeah, um, the exact same type of phenomenon. Yes, there are portals on this planet. Like Skinwalker is one of them, and this place is one of them. Um, but. See, and this is this ties into my really bad, um, you know, wall uh, house with thin walls theory. You mm -hmm. know, there's certain places on this planet where the walls are really thin that you really that thin. something from the other side can kind of push through. 
right? And it's obvious our ancestors knew about all these places, which is why it's in his culture it's prohibited. It's because they, right. you know, they knew they didn't have an explanation for it other than you know, stay the hell away from this area at night. Right. Yeah. And it could be where monuments are built, and um, even ancient ones. Yeah, where the pyramids are. Yeah, where the pyramids are. So weird. The day the children are forbidden to go there is a very, very strange place that the indigenous leaders say the only one that can do this job to go there uh, and to see if the phenomena wants contacts there where they are descending is me, and they'll prepare Hmm. my warriors, my family here in the indigenous tribe prepare our spirit to 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 go to this combat because if you go there with he said to me if you go there with your spirit weak you have a lot of problems holy crap so they know no of this tree this sacred tree being literally a portal yes but as i said it's a portal not in our the things are not supposed to come in form of light or uh, vehicles to our world. This is what they strange. It's not expected for the indigenous people to have things coming from the spiritual realm to our reality to appear. You're doing my head in, Ron. This is extraordinary. I didn't expect this degree. Wow. So they were they were shocked. So they knew about this portal, but they were shocked that they were actually coming in, is what he's saying. I mean, you. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wow. I guess, yeah, I guess they're surprised that it's actually physically manifesting. It could be just the times we're in now. You know, that's always been predicted mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. that that's what happens. That realm starts to leak into here. Um, crazy. That's scary. Uh, all right, moving on. So you did share this with me, the British Earth and Aerial Mystery Society. And Beans! Is, yes. I've n- I've not heard about this one, and it's also in the 70s. October 27th, 1974, the Avely Alien Abduction Case from Avely, Essex, UK. This is a wild one. So this, so Beams, the British Earth and Aerial Mystery Society, was founded in, in the 90s, 91. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is one of their big cases. Uh, scroll down just a little bit. On late Sunday evening, October 27th, 1974, run-of-the-mill Essex family were driving a route between Harold Hill and Avely to see relatives. The Avis family, consisting of John uh, and his wife, Elaine, they had three children. Uh, they were on Hackton Lane, about one mile out from Hornchurch with... For them, the road's noticeably quiet, even for a Sunday night. Uh, Elaine, that's the wife, she recalled the car jerking violently as the mist curled around their car at a point in the journey. Uh, It was Kevin, the only one of the children awake, who asked his parents about a light he could see above the country lane houses. Uh, Collins reports, glancing around, both John and Elaine at an angle, angle of about 25 degrees, 30 degrees above the skyline, an oval-shaped, pale blue, iridescent light, like a big star over the top of the houses to their left. So these these people got got in their car on on the way to go see uh, relatives. Five uh, of them. So it was a full car. Full car, very full yeah. car. <laughs> uh, family member that this big star seemed to be traveling in the same direction as the car, stopping and starting as it moved. The light seemed to stay with them, but for periods where rows of trees in the county lanes would obscure the view, uh, at which times in the early stages they would relax, thinking it may have gone. Um, they thought it might have been a helicopter, but they pretty yeah. soon figured out it was a UFO. Yeah, I would first think it's a helicopter too, always. So once they cleared the last of the houses and were in open countryside, um, they were approaching country lanes near up minister at around 30 miles per hour when they had a terrible feeling that something was wrong. Suddenly the engine and tires went silent and the only sound that could be heard was from their radio. Uh-huh. Then as they went through a bend on Avely road, they could see no more than 30 yards in front of them and covering the whole road, a thick mist or a fog uh-huh. described as a dense green and banked about eight to nine feet high wow so there's the there's the mist and the fog again an illustration of what they would have seen yeah wow just as the mist was seen by the family the radio started crackling and smoking 
which caused John to pull out his wires. It's wires. Uh, yeah. Different different time where you could just yank out. You go, oh, God, the radio's making noise. You yank it It out. was smoking, though. I mean, that is bizarre. Yeah, they were engulfed by the fog. Um, car yeah. jerked violently. Quite, quite mist fog. curled around the car. Two children asleep. Uh, one of them was awake. That's Kevin. Uh, John and Elaine recall it was very light inside the fog and that they felt very cold. The tingling sensation was felt and there was dead silence. Uh, they recall being in the mist for what seemed like a second or two before they were out. Um, there was a jolt described as like a car going over a humpback bridge, very British, <laughs> and then the mist was gone. They hit a speed bump is what it sounds like. Yeah. I don't know what a humpback bridge is, but I'm pretty sure that's a, a speed bridge. bump uh, for us Americans here. America. <laughs> uh, Elaine remembered asking, is everybody there with herself and John feeling both very nervous and frightened, although no ill effects were remembered and the two children aside from Kevin still asleep. The couple don't recall t talking a large amount about what had happened. The situation said provoked a let's just get, get, let's just get <laughs> home atmosphere. Uh, the couple expected it to be around 10 20 when they arrived home, 10 20 p.m. Oh, uh, but instead it was 1 a.m. leaving wow. around three hours. The couple could not account for oh, wow. missing time. Um, this seems to always happen with abduction scenarios. Uh, but it gets weirder. The family reported unnerving incidents around the home after the encounter, including an object levitating. There were noticeable changes in the family following an incident, Collins reports. Before Christmas that year, John had a nervous breakdown and stopped working. Before later uh -huh. taking on a job, before taking on a job working with mentally handicapped people, something he wanted to do for years, the job fell into his lap. A different direction from his usual carpentry and construction work, he would also begin writing poems about life. Mm -hmm. Elaine started attending college, and reportedly grew in confidence. Interesting. So these people had their whole lives essentially rewritten um, yeah. after this happened. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a big one. Uh, John and Elaine stopped eating meat and became far huh. more health conscious in their nutrition with the taste of meat or fish now making them ill. What? And whereas before the incidents, uh, they would enjoy they would enjoy a good drink. Uh, the couple would now not touch a drop of alcohol. Hmm. The couple uh, reportedly also became very environmentally conscious uh, with John quitting his 60 to 70 a day smoking <laughs> habit. Oh my God. <laughs> my God. Uh, here's another big one. Uh, Kevin's reading age at school was repeatedly reportedly well beyond his years. Whereas prior to the incident, it had been reported as backwards of his age. He was That's slow. Weird. He went the opposite direction, became a very good reader. Uh, family reported unnerving incidents around the home after the encounter, including an object levitating, clicking noises, what? and the sound of Morse code. And young Kevin reportedly seen a strange figure beside his bed on one occasion, similar in looks to that of a clown. Do you remember a uh, Sam what? Sun, Sundown Clown or Sa whatever it was? Remember that? We covered that story a long yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. The clown. The robot clown thing. So uh, I would like to see where this kid is at now. Yeah, which unfortunately I don't think we're going to know, which is a, a good, you know, you don't want that something that happened in your childhood to be following you, you know, throughout your whole life. Yeah. There's a diagram of, uh, yeah. you know, the road and everything. Where it stopped, I mean, mm -hmm. where they saw. But yeah, I mean, this, this whole family clearly got abducted and their whole lives turned around and it even gets weirder. Um, so the couple, John and Elaine, admitted to strange dreams in which creatures would examine them on long tables and other versions of that ilk. Uh, at this point, Collins, who is the researcher, uh, sought hypnotist Leonard Wilder to query the couple's subconscious and see if these dreams were masking real abduction memories. Mm. John agreed to hypnosis, uh, and Elaine declined at first. She wanted to move on. Um, it was decided hypnotizing Kevin was not an option due to his age and the pressure any memories might leave. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. John, who went up to, under hypnosis first, began to remember that as he began to remember that as the car entered the mist, he found himself in a big room with tall and in quotes, peaceful beings in one piece, colorless suits. John recalled that they had pink eyes and communicated by telepathy telepathy. They put him on a table and ran a bar like instrument over his body. Uh, he asked them where they came from. They showed him a map, but not a map. Very <laughs> common, very common yeah. with, with abduction scenarios. And he, they're really happy to show where they're from. 
Um, but they don't give any proof. I mean, no. um, Betty Betty Hill from the Betty and Barney Hill abduction. She was she was shown a three D map of where they were from. Yeah, <clears throat> but they don't um, really say where they're from. Right. Yeah. Um, they showed him a map, but not a map, and gave an explanation of which he could only remember the word Phobos, which I believe mm. is a moon of Mars. Yeah. Um, they travel, he was told, almost instantaneously. They explained how, but he could not understand. A small bean was present at the table. It had fruit light covering. Hey, hair covered aliens. <laughs> Got a light. <laughs> Got a light. And made chirping sounds. It served the tall beans. Huh. So it looks like they kept um, interviewing John and hypnotizing him. Yeah. Um, he was in a room, a very large room, an examiner that was smaller than us, in quotes, with big eyes and a mouth not like ours examined him. And there's a picture here, which basically looks like someone in scrubs. Yeah, with, it does. With a little bit larger than usual eyes. Yeah. Uh, tall beans had no visible mouths. Uh, John understood that their propulsion system used a magnetic vortex, um, though he had begun to mutter somewhat incoherently at his responses at this point. So he's under hypnosis. Mm -hmm. He only countered three of the tall beans and only one communicated with him. When John was asked the reason for the beans visit to Earth, he replied, no visit. They are here always. Mm. The call was coming from inside the house. Yeah. Asked where they came from, he said there was no need for them to say, and that they have no need to return home. They have more than one. Home. They have more than one base. Hmm. Uh, he was brought out of hypnosis. He felt like he was prevented from saying anything more. Just breezing through this here in my head. Uh, Collins kept in touch with the family. Oh, John and Lane separated. Oh, of course. All right, mm -hmm. so they. Hmm. The aliens, they all different emotion. They all different motivations down in life. And they were changed, right? Yeah, the aliens rewrote them, and uh, man, that's a that's tough. Three kids, and uh, yeah. you know your life is completely and utterly changed. This is why you know as much as I, we brought it up earlier. As much as I love hearing about abduction cases, it it ruins your life. Um, they're they're fun to read about and fun to study, but the people who get abducted, their lives are completely yeah. ruined. So the kids, I mean, age 10, 11, and 7. Wow. Kevin, Karen, Stewart. Well, if, we, if anyone knows what they're doing now, hit us up. <laughs> yeah, let us know. We'd love to talk to you guys. We, we won't harass you. I mean, you know, maybe these guys started up uh, Fortune 500 companies. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I mean that one guy like went from, like, not reading to, like, reading beyond his, his grade, right? Yeah. 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 But see, that's the thing. Uh, Kevin sounds like a smart. Well, he became smart, and if he's smart, he'd stay out of the limelight. True. Yeah. He'd probably change his name. To cool case. Never heard of cool it. Case. Yeah. Also, yeah, in the seventies. Yeah, seventies were a wild time for uh, you know UFO abductions. So it looks like these guys have a lot of cases, and it's only British, obviously, right? They must have covered the Sundown Clown. <laughs> that was such a weird one. We covered it. We did quickly, cover it. It's a very yeah. fun one. Oh, they're going through like delivering evidence, misidentification, real. Cool. Well, they're still around. That's great to know. Yeah. Their website is totally 90s. Keep it up, Beams. <laughs> yeah, keep it up. Def definitely update your website. Um, well, okay, I sent this to you, and um, once again, I love abduction scenarios. I love possessions. Basically, anytime the human brain doesn't function as it's properly supposed to because of outside influences, I find that a very fascinating subject. I uh, really wanted to be a psychologist when I was in college. I don't know if I've told you that. Mm -mm. Uh, I, I love study of human nature, um, and this is – I don't know how – I don't know. Do you believe in, um, um, you know, demons and, and being? Uh, yeah. What? I mean, I, can, I, I believe in something that can be a negative force, you know, um, that can that can latch on to you. So, yeah, in a sense. Yeah. But do you believe in like they can take over bodies and, and speak in Latin and all this other stuff? I mean, if that person gave like permission, then yes. 
but I don't think it'll just happen happen by force. Yeah. Um, although I'm not, I don't like speaking absolutes either, so you know I can't really rule that out. But just the way it works, like in the spiritual in the spirit world, or from, from what I've experienced in life, is that you have to be open to it and you have to invite it, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, if it's spiritual. So this is a, uh, a rare recording of a demon speaking during the exorcism of Annalise Mitchell in Germany, 1975 to 1976. Here we go in the 70s again. Um, and we didn't do this on, by purpose or anything. But but I have to say, I listened to her voice, and it's weird. Very it weird. Yeah. Very weird. You can't, it's, I don't know if you can even act that. Yeah. Sounds like a cat. is an actual recording from the exorcisms. How? How is that happening to the voice? It sounds all digital. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. So for those of you, hopefully you're watching this podcast and not listening, because if you're listening, that was a whole lot of nothing. Um, this is obviously in German, but there are subtitles that I believe are translated properly. Truthfully, they could be talking about a really cool syrup recipe and i would have yeah no idea. right i don't know a lick of german except for yeah yeah that means <laughs> yes oh yeah it's a very oh good yeah time. good in morgan very good time being exercised good by demons. <laughs> hey don't make fun of germans <laughs> we don't want the fourth reich <laughs> so i guess this is a better quality one and it sounds digital when she speaks it, like, it definitely it- like it sounds like remember all those myths like if you play a black sabbath record backwards it's in yeah. latin and it's about right. praising the devil and stuff like that. that's exactly what it sounds like weird the fun right. thing about German is um, even if someone, you know, is saying really nice things, it sounds like they're yelling at you. <laughs> it does. It has that effect. Yeah. Very, very harsh language. <laughs> the snitching ass demon. <laughs> yeah, I have. I, I don't know the veracity of this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> <was a> weather <laughs> balloon. <laughs> you know, um, exorcisms are wild. I don't know how. Uh, widely used they are now uh, by the Catholic Church, especially. <clears throat> I know 100%, they were... 100% this comment. I thought that too. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it goes, we talked about this last week where um, the aliens don't like it if you start, because we were talking about 
yeah. we, we showed that guy on Reddit who was asking for advice how to right. not be abducted anymore. Yeah. One of the replies was, pray to Jesus, pray to Jesus. They hate that. And it's mm-hmm. the exact same thing that's happening now is this woman who is supposedly possessed by a demon um, you know, is saying essentially the same thing that most people don't really believe anymore, so they won, essentially. Yeah. You know, have your have your rosary ready and start praying because it demons works. hate that. Yeah, they do. They do. And the Catholic Church has been uh, Catholic Church has been doing this for it's long time. Long yeah. time. Right. Um, so he's Gary Nolan, he did an interview, but it's a great clip here. He basically talks about disclosure and when it happens, well, you know, what can we expect? He's saying disclosure already happened, but he has a great take on, on oh, disclosure. Okay governmental information why if they have it already why haven't they disclosed it but let's say that day two comes how do you envision humans really engaging with with this new reality and also how do you think we should change or how we would change pragmatically well, i i think day two is let's call it a more sober reflection on the matter um and the hysterics are gone. Um, I think day two, the majority of the world goes back to living its life and wondering about where its food comes from. Where's, who's going to put you know dinner on the table? Oh, it's tomorrow. I have to take the trash out. Um, you know, I think that's day two because for most people, it will mean nothing. It will mean nothing. You know, I mean, the people that it matters to are the are the ones who look to take advantage of it, right? So I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean that in a positive sense that, okay, there's something here. What's in it for me? What's in it for the country? What's in it for my family? What's in it for the planet? So that's the conversation. And so actually it ends up looping right back to what humans have been dealing with every day for all of reality is, how do I invest in potential, right? And, um, and that means, okay, if there's a technology that we can take advantage of, can I convince them to give it to me? Do, do any of our monetary consequences mean anything to them? No. I'll give you a trillion dollars. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, if we do the conversion rate, you know, from our point of view, it's a point of a, it's one tenth of a penny. Your many means nothing to us. So, you know, what, what's the currency of the discussion? Um, and so, uh, I mean, that's the first thing you have to ask. And so I think at, at best, we have nothing to give them. Nothing. <laughs> Well, that's not true. From what, from what we've been researching, there's definitely something. I mean, it's it's probably both physical, which I would say is like, you know, I'm sorry to say, is like body parts and blood mm. and genetic <clears throat> stuff, so right? In our in our DNA and our sperm and our eggs. Um, right. Yeah. So there is. They just don't. They just don't outright say it. So yeah, there is something they want, but will they give us the technology for it? Oh, well, God. actually. But isn't that the basis behind the whole Eisenhower thing, too, that his agreement with them? Right. But, um, you know, it seems like they got the better end of the deal because uh, yeah. where's my flying car that has zero emissions? Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Where, where's my uh, uh, my power station for my house? That's, right. You know, that, that cube that can just power up everything for free. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, seriously, because it's not like, you know, the aliens came down and said only your top 0.1% of people get to have this, <laughs> but also you have to rape little kids <laughs> for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or they're copying them, you know, they're like, well, you know, if they're extracting blood and using something, you know, we can do it too, or we should do it. Yeah. I mean, it goes into the whole adrenochrome, you know, I won't say conspiracy theory because it doesn't seem right. like much of a theory these days. No, no, it doesn't. Um, oh, wait, he's going to say something interesting. So we, what we just said. And so, you know, w- what's in it for them then to give us anything other than goodwill and the hope that there is goodwill. 
right? And so I think that that's kind of where you have to start this discussion. Um, and I think then at best, we take advantage only by mimicry. Uh, there it is. So yeah. nice. we mimic them, right? So he, he, he or he's talking about technology, but you know they could be socially mimicking them. God, if these get aliens, away with this shit. If these aliens are out raping little kids, man, you know what? All this, all this abduction stuff being fun to read about. I take it back. Yeah, I mean, dude. Okay, it, go, it goes back that now to like the, our like even the Abrahamic uh, religion past, right? Weren't they um, sacrificing children right, yeah. to God, and then God stopped? I think it was Abraham, right? Stopped. He finally stops. All right, no, that's it. No more sacrificing, you know, to your mm -hmm. Lord. Um, is it any different? Yeah, it's it seems really... like it, it seems like it's like a common theme. Yeah, uh, man, man, oh man, disturbing yeah. stuff. I know. Yeah, okay, let's not get dark here. So, <laughs> by seeing what it is that they can do, if they can show us what they can do, maybe we can figure out how they do it. Knowing that somebody can move faster than light, if that's, let's say, something that they have, or saying that they have some way to negate gravity, just the most extreme examples, um, tells any good scientist, okay, well, it's possible. Okay, so if I can get a piece of one of their craft, let's say, maybe I can find the principle within there that leads to the technology revolutions that eventually allow me to do it as well one day. Yeah. We do see that happening for sure. Mm -hmm. um, last week we talked about Merrick's um, interview with Kirkpatrick. And we, <laughs> we showed some clips. Yes, so the whole did. interview's out. And I don't, and I just saw this by the way. So I don't know if we'll get lucky in getting some snips from here, but it's the entire interview. Um, or we can just leave it for. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should leave it for our audience. Yeah, because um, we because we're not ready. We we talked a lot. At, we talked at length about all the different lies that Kirkpatrick got caught in during this interview. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Everything, everything he lied about. He goes, oh wait, I when he talked about that, he read the NASA report, and that and that's where he got his conclusions from. Uh, um, from uh, the Go Fast uh -huh. craft, and then he goes. Oh yeah, I I didn't read the NASA report. Yeah, that was one of them. <coughs> and gimbal gimbal being in the daytime is like no, it actually was at night. You know stuff like that. Yeah, I mean the guy had no idea. I mean he was just lying out of his mouth. They love those guys. Yeah. Oh, and here's from uh, the debrief. You you. NASA veterans propellantless propulsion drive that physics says shouldn't work just produced enough thrust to overcome Earth's gravity. Isn't that nuts? It's so cool, man. Pro I mean, you don't even need gases, nothing. It just propels itself. Dr. Charles Butler, a NASA <laughs> engineer and the co-founder of Exodus Propulsion Technologies, has revealed that his company's propellantless propulsion drive which appears to defy the known laws of physics, has produced enough thrust to counteract Earth's gravity. A veteran of such storied programs as NASA Space Shuttle, the ISS, the Hubble Telescope, and the, the NASA Dust Program, Butler and his <laughs> colleagues believe that their discovery of a fundamental new force represents a historic break, breakthrough that I mean, will impact space travel for the next millennium. That is... So why isn't this? Why is this just on the debrief? I mean, sorry, yeah. debrief is a good publication, but I'm saying, why isn't this like big news? I was going to say this feels like something that should be everywhere. I mean, this is huge. Yeah, the new discovery of a new force is fundamental, and the electrical and electric fields alone can generate a sustainable force onto an object and allow a center of mass translation of said object without expelling mass. I'm curious. How does this? Does it? Say, does it like? I mean, I obviously, won't break down the technical details, but does it say yeah. how it works? Um, because that's th this is a huge deal. I'm, I am yeah. truly amazed. This is not bigger news. Anti Gravity Club. The company's called Exodus, and there, here's this presentation. Um, hmm. electrostatics. 
So there is energy that has to be put into it, obviously, and it seems like it's electricity. Yeah. Electrostatics. Uh, a quick look. No, that's his background. Okay, also his background. So it go, so something from nature. He goes, nature has its own way of doing things. Butler explained. <laughs> and it is our job to uncover what nature does. It just happens to fall into my lap in what I'm the expert in. All right. It just happened, sorry, to fall into my lap. The Here device rust. Uh, hold on. I'm going to read this really quick in my head. That doesn't tell anything. Blah, blah, blah. Mathematics. Yeah. Coming <laughs> years. No, this doesn't say anything. Yeah, it's not. Told a debrief. All right. No. Yeah. The uh, aim is to approach and said unity. Million Newtons. Ten million Newtons. Uh, it doesn't. It just. He's just talking about how much uh, force it generates, but it doesn't say how it's generating the force. I wonder if he's scared. Um, um, Custom made vacuum chamber. All right. Most test different configurations of asymmetrical capacitors employed models with opposing asymmetrical plates. That doesn't tell me anything. Huh. So here's the next phase <clears throat> high vacuum testing. Yeah, I mean, because they wanted to work in space, obviously. Yeah. Our materials are composed of many types of charge. Okay, so it has something to do with electricity. Yeah, and, and, and grabbing the electricity from the environment. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting stuff. With an end seeming sight. Uh, all right, here we go. A quick look at, at a chart he presented it to APEC, APEC shows that tests performed between early 2022 and 2023 resulted in a rapid climb moving from one thousandth, one hundredth, and even one tenth of gravity all the way up to one full Earth gravity. This means that their current devices, which Berler told the debrief, weigh somewhere between 30 to 40 grams on their own without the attached test equipment were producing enough thrust to counteract the full force of one Earth gravity. Well, here and here's the graph. Right. I mean, he's just talking about the, the testing, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So something, something, something. He's pulling this device, pulls electricity out of nature, and it creates thrust somehow. Yeah quantum drive but like oh man this is really i have so many questions after <laughs> of course there's aliens in the freaking slideshow damn this, humans made a black hole again <laughs> this creates more questions for me yeah. because an object as far as i know can't create thrust without expelling something so is it like like is it f like fire like combustion it's no it's using the quantum but that doesn't that doesn't make any that doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, because the quantum we can't see anyway. Huh. Um, when asked for competing companies, says other companies doing this. So, like, if you put this on the side of a ship and stuck it out, you wouldn't see. You would just see a ship floating. Right. It would huh. just yeah, propellantless. I so he wants. To... There's something going on here. <laughs> I don't buy that one bit. They want companies to license their technology. Well, yeah. there's quantized inertia. I wonder if I wonder if it's the same thing, because there is a quantized inertia that even SpaceX put up as an experiment. Um, like it's it has to at least like push air down, right? No, it uses something else. But the, it oh. doesn't. Here he is. You want to listen to him? No, I don't. I don't buy bullers. <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping to do some demos, some space demos. That's what we're trying to get some funding to do. I think that would be a great way to show off the technology. Huh. You can't deny this. There's not a lot to this. You're just charging up Teflon, copper tape, and foam, and you have this thrust. Huh? See, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm assuming this experiment is very, very small. Oh, you mean, yeah, when he said like 30, like 40 grams, right? Like physically small. Yeah. Um, as as far as his own thoughts about the nature of the force his team has uncovered, the refreshingly honest NASA veteran demurred, saying only that he believes scientists beside himself are in the perfect position to test and study the results and to come up with the answers. So that's how he answered. So, oh, but QED is here. So it is quantized 
inertia. Is that like, uh, oh man, we, this is search one size. Very cool. I hope we get to see uh, more of this in the future. Because right now, this article just has me asking more and more questions. Yeah. And of course, they never really reveal. They're probably scared someone will take their idea. Right. Well, he says how easy it is putting a charge to whatever he said, copper and foam. Wait, wait, wait. I'm Tim Ventura, and we're joined today by Dr. Charles Buell. As things stand, this is fully protected, not only based on what you've observed. Well, from what we know, if it's fully protected, it's not using classified technology or he's just, oh, wait, he's a NASA guy. Of course he's allowed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, the model that you've created to optimize it for propulsion applications, right? Yeah, I think that's what makes this unique among other potential discoveries in this field is that uh, we have a theory. We test to the theory. Then the theory leads to a model, the model leads to computations, and then the okay. engineering leads to the design. So you have to have those three things working in conjunction to have a uh, to have a path forward, at least in my opinion. He's still not this answering. This was the part that blew me away. This is incredibly exciting. And this goes to what you were saying about optimizing it and building the model. So let me share that. So in terms of propulsive force, you have built several hundred experimental device variations. And between 2014 and 2021, and I think that this graph reflects that, they all produced what appears to be less than one thousandth of an Earth gravity of force. Now that changed in 2021, and you have rapidly increased up to slightly over one G of force. So can you tell me what led to this dramatic increase in propulsive force output and also how much farther do you think you might be able to take this using current design technology sure so what we have here like you said is a graph of our progress it doesn't represent all of the tests and it certainly doesn't represent all of the models that we've tested that's numbers close to the thousand but here's a few select uh, that we put together just to kind of show the highlight of the progress so from 2016 to 2020 like you said that was basically those are basically the conventional asymmetrical capacitors that you'd see in the textbooks um, with a twist. We, you know, we, we encase them, and I don't think they've ever been encased, uh, you know, in styrofoam to make sure that they didn't leak charge. We definitely did that on purpose, and they still worked. So that's kind of what sets us apart from the old T. Thomas Brown stuff. A lot of that stuff was in air with tens of thousands of volts. We, we shy away from that. We go to much lower voltage and... We try to encapsulate everything. The big advantage, uh, the big uh, jump in 2020, 2021 was a, a few things. The first thing was the uh, the presence of the high vacuum system. So now once we move things into high vacuum, um, now you can eliminate some of the sources of noise and errors, like the ion right. wind. He's not getting to what I want. Um, I thought I was going to answer your question. I thought he was going to answer your question there about thrust. No, God, no, um, of course not. Let's let's move yeah, on. Let's move I on. mean, this is I agree. fascinating stuff, but um, very little actual information is being revealed. Yeah, here. he's not telling us much. He just basically wants funding, and he wants other companies to license it. Yep. Um, I, this is just a quick one. I sent this to you. Scientific American. This is the this is the headline. It goes no nope. very scientific, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It goes nope. It's never aliens. Claims of alien starships visiting Earth always fall short, but people still far, st fall for them. So Scientific American, this is how they start out their um, their article. And this guy goes through, he, look at him. I grew up believing in UFOs. I watch TV, blah, blah, blah. He goes through that. Now, he he goes through the, you know UFO history, UAPs, why they're called UAPs now. And he goes through Go Fast and Gimbal. Right and uh, and Fleer called Fleer Go Fast and Gimbal. He uses Mick West in the article. <laughs> there he goes, Mick West, a retired computer programmer and prominent UFO skeptic, has examined the videos and people have pro proven that his examinations of Gimbal and Go Fast are completely batshit crazy. If if you are such a weak willed person that. Uh, your opinion is swayed by Mick West. Uh, you don't deserve to be a journalist. And this is why, basically, this is why journalism is dying, is articles like this. Yeah. And just, they're government mouthpieces, and Mick West is there conveniently for them to use 
you know, with his investigations yep. into these. But, you know, good on the Washington Examiner. They came out with this. The scientific problem with, nope, it's never aliens, which is really great. Nice little clap back there. I know. What is this? No, not that. I just mean the article. Is- oh, yes, it is. Um, he goes, your argument isn't off to a great start when you undermine it in your title. Yep. So, and uh, who's this? Uh, T- Tom Rogan. Rogan? Really? Well, and he goes through and basically tells him it's not very scientific for you to just make that conclusion. Um, and then where is it? Um, oh, yeah. So th- this speaks to the central problem with the UFO subject. The overconfidence of those who consider it. On one side are those UFO enthusiasts who, inf- who fixate on believing every spy balloon is an extra-dimensional, extraterrestrial, or extra-temporal craft. These individuals become angry when journalists, such as myself, report that some strange UFOs are as distinct- distinctly terrestrial in origin. Too many UFO enthusiasts also see government secrecy on UFOs as inherent evidence of a conspiracy. And while a conspiracy of small groups cannot be ruled out, a grand conspiracy would have leaked. And it has leaked. Hello. (laughs) Most government UFO-related secrecy is designed certain programs classified that are totally unrelated to UFOs, but very much related to aerospace activity. On the other side are the journalists and scientists who fixate on believing that a wealth of credible witnesses and historic data sets amount to little more than clouds, balloons, and obsessive delusion. Or, as Plate puts it, who wrote the um, Scientific American article, UFO-related reporting, quote, is all still just the same breathless headlines and lack of substance behind them. There is no there there. Um, So, yeah, so he goes through the whole McWest thing. Um, and then basically uh, goes to that UFO is still remain unexplained that they, no one has explained a lot of these things, right? Going back decades. Um, and Plate's centering claim is that Occam's razor, the well-worn rule of thumb for scientific inquiry, applies well here. The simplest explanation is usually the best. So what would be the simplest explanation for all those? Well, that there's something out there that we can't explain. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he goes. He goes because that the Scientific American does not count account for all the radar, sonar, and satellite and other sensor returns that happen with these cases. Um, apparently, showing objects ex- exhibiting maneuvers far beyond contemporary science and sometimes evading military intercepts. Records released under the Freedom of Information Act offer a litany of these reports from from various military and government agencies. Yeah, so he's basically saying, you know, that guy started out with that conclusion. I mean, sorry, with that title and then concluded that way as well, using Mick West and not really using any other evidence. So it's just embarrassing that the Scientific American Journal would release something like that. But it's typical. Yeah, it's journalism, man. Their, this job sucks and is boring. Mm-hmm. Unless they leave and do something else and something better. Oh, that's right. So, Lou, you sent me this, but Lou yeah. Elizondo had his book leaked out on Google Books. It's been taken down, by the way. Yeah, that doesn't doesn't surprise me in the slightest. But yeah, um, a lot of a lot of the thing things in his book have leaked. Um, this is something we've talked about on so many so many different episodes. Yeah. Um, but Louis Elizondo experienced visiting orbs multiple times at home, and there's some excerpts posted. This was on Reddit, my least favorite website. <laughs> Uh, one over time, more orbs appeared in our home, not too frequently. A whole month might go by, and then one would arrive. Since our orbs manifested as clear or green, I did not feel compelled to warn my family to avoid them. I didn't <laughs> want to frighten them further. As far as I knew, only blue was problematic. Um, yeah, very cool. I mean, so he I, grew up in that house. Yeah. That's it. Oh, here's another. Um, he never had any interaction with orbs until, just scroll up to the top of that little thing real quick, until he started working with the program. 
He was shocked to find a lot of his colleagues had began experiencing firsthand some of the orbs in their homes. So it wasn't just him. It was a lot of people. Uh. Um, one evening, a green glowing ball, probably about the size of a basketball, with soft edges that weren't defined, floated down slowly from our kitchen uh, to our bedroom door just below the ceiling light and disappeared into a wall. Um the objects had been three-dimensional, but still translucent and suffused with an eerie green light. The object behaved as if guided by some intelligence. Very, this is, again, I keep, I, I, well, I'll always do it. I'll always bring up Skinwalker Ranch, but this is, I mean, one for one, this is a, the exact kind of thing that was happening at Skinwalker Ranch as well. Yeah, and that, um, uh, who's that guy that they made commit suicide? Um yeah. Uh, Benowitz or something. Yeah, yeah, they saw that in his house too when they went to investigate him. Yeah. And they wouldn't tell him. But I mean, his whole family were seeing these things. Um, yeah. Ki his crazy. kids reported seeing an orb appear in the air, hover near them for a few seconds and float away. Yeah, man. Did they go through walls? Probably. Yeah, go through walls. Yeah. So anyway, his book is out, I think, in, in August or October, but it's coming up soon. But yeah, it was it was all over the internet. People just completely screenshotted everything, investigated everything. Of course, the debunkers were making fun of it. Yeah, I mean, here, here's the thing: it, it just seems to go, you know, it seems to show that when you start seriously researching UFOs in an official um, capacity, you get researched back. Yeah, something happens. Yeah, to you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Richard Geldr Geldrich from uh, X, we we used to share. I mean, we sh we share stuff all the time on the show. He said because he started investigating and going deep, some weird things started happening to him, um, and just random stuff. And it's not always the same thing. It could be just someone, some some strange individual that just sits next to him, kind of thing. Um, or maybe maybe people become more high, uh, more aware when they start researching this. Yeah, your both. perception changes or something, and you you get to you, well not get to you start seeing things on a different level. Um, more stuff about Nazca it looks like here. Yeah, the Nazca mummies. Mystery around controversial Peru alien mummies deepens after new fingerprint analysis indicates they're not human. <laughs> so they got fingerprints too. Good lord! Very I mean, could you imagine stuff. if it's a hoax like the. the yeah, to even like go through that. Yeah, I mean, it seems so, and it looks so goofy on the surface, but the more studies that they do on these things, there's yeah. just more stuff that makes it real. You know, like w there was the pregnant one, now there's fingerprints. Like you're telling me some, you know, asshole went out in the woods and went out in the jungle and created these things and put fingerprints on them? There's no way. Right, that the, that the Peru government wants, wants to take back. The CIA showing up, offering to help yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. That is really weird. Yeah, just more evidence every week that comes out with that. Mm -hmm. um, did you know that our first UFO... Look at this. Great picture, guys. America's first UFO sighting was in this Massachusetts city 400 years ago. Yeah. I, I saw the... Boston. I saw the title of this article and I had to laugh because there's no way this one was the first, probably the first that's um, written. written. Yeah. Um, Boston. Yeah. in Boston. So not 1947. Boston is a home of the first sighting in the U S the first UFO report came from Boston, Massachusetts in 1639. Man, we weren't even a country yet. Nope. We were still a colony, a British colony. No, wait, that sounds Scottish. <laughs> You're a, a, a for effort. <laughs> I think the I think the Scottish accent's a bit easier to, for, yeah. for me at least. I, I cannot for do for me. I can't do any European accents except for weird stereotypical German. You can do you can do Russian accent. Like I'm kind of do a Russian accent. Yeah, see, but... yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> uh, that's not right, that's so... East, East, East Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very Eastern Europe. So this is from the mayor, then mayor of Boston, uh, John Winthrop, via his journal. Everill, who was a sober, discreet man, and two other men were rowing their boat on the muddy river toward the, the Charles. Yep, toward the Charles River. 
when they saw a light like nothing ever seen in the night sky before. Avril and the other men were in their boat for more than two hours and watched as the light moved incredibly quick between Boston and neighboring cities two or so miles away. What helped to bring credibility to Avril's story was that there were diverse other credible persons who also saw the light during this time period. Now, in the 1600s, 1600s that would be weird to see, don't you think? Just like oh, bright, absolutely. bright light and then quickly going from city to city. Because yeah, you, do, you don't have the excuse to go like, oh, that's Drones. a drone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a balloon. <laughs> Chinese lantern. Oh, maybe it's a Chinese lantern in the 1600s. <laughs> I bet you they had those. <laughs> not, not in the U.S. they didn't. We didn't import Chinese stuff until the 1900s. I'm just making that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, when did we build the railroads? That's when they. Started oh, yeah. I forgot about in. that. Right. Is that 1700s? Maybe. I don't know. Did you know the oldest Chinese restaurant is in Montana? The oldest. No. The oldest American Chinese restaurant is in Montana. And it's like in like in Butte or something. You're kidding me. Wait, what's that show on HBO? Is that called Westwood? Westwood. Uh, What's it, is it about cowboys and stuff like Yellowstone? Yeah, well, you're talking about no, not Yellowstone. It's, it, it's Westwood, and it, and it is about cowboys. But but it was about city gold. I don't think it was California. I think it was in Montana, and there there was there was a Chinese um, community in there. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I know the Chinese built the railroads all over the Western United States. Right. Um, and then a second UFO sighting was reported in Boston five years later in 1644. In 1644, two strange lights converged in the sky to form the likeness of a human. Oh, my God. What? That's like the hand thing, huh? Yeah, that's so cool. Um, so five while years the, later. While the, loco- lo- while the location was not the same as where it was for Everill's sighting, uh, it was over a body of water. Mm, um, of something we always see with UFOs. Um Three men who were coming into Boston via a boat. God, they love our they love their boats in the 1600s. Mm-hmm. It's like dolphins. Around midnight, who never mm-hmm. mind, whatever. 1600s were a different time. They saw two bright lights <laughs> come out of the water and into the sky. When this occurred, the lights moved to the town cove and formed the shape of a man. The lights went at a small distance into town, uh, and so to the south point, and they and there vanished away. Weird. Very, very yeah, weird. weird. Yeah. Igni- Ignis Fatuus, or light, or light that calmly glows in marshlands. Oh, okay. Oh, it, they're talking about swamp farts. Yeah, yeah. That's a real gas. thing. That is a real thing that happens, but it swamp farts don't uh, fly around like UFOs. Oh, uh, and then, so this is from the U.S. Sun. Coming soon, Sci-Fly... New Jetson law paves the way for flying cars from August 1st and will allow future aircraft to be classed as vehicles. So I can't wait. Cars. I can't wait to do my hour and 45 minute drive into work just to see the elite, you know, laying in their in the backseat of their flying car eating caviar. Oh, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's you exactly. Know, you know, that's what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. It's going to be only them on those yep. roads and not not the not the plebs. You not, us, not us please. yeah yeah right that yeah and hey, you know what i've got a call to action to all of our listeners donate to us so we can infiltrate the upper class and we'll take them down <laughs> i wonder how many people have said that <clears throat> trump <laughs> <laughs> there's always there's always every every single one of them every single, yeah obama and then you and then you go to Epstein's Island on accident and oops had right. sex. With oh kid. wait, what plane Long is this? Time. Oh come on, guys, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're on the manifest. And then you get punched in the eye and you've got a black eye and everyone's yeah. like, "What? Yeah. Why does do all these old rich people have black eyes? What's going on there?" Maybe the one, maybe the ones with the black eyes are the ones that fought and wanted to get off the plane. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Those are the good guys. Right. I doubt it because there's so many sh- bad people with black eyes. Yeah, very true. And the only ones who like ever get any power are like the, the worst people ever. Right. So yeah. that's cool. I mean, you know, we they uh, I think this is the third state that made this law. So they, now they're making they're making roads in the sky. These are virtual roads, of course. I can't imagine anything more depressing than sitting in traffic in the fucking sky. <laughs> could you? I think if it's in the sky, there's no traffic, right? You could go anywhere, anywhere. 
anywhere and you're stuck behind some idiot who's watching TV instead of paying attention to the road. <laughs> and especially that's virtual. It might still have traffic. You know, yeah. you're not allowed to leave that box. It's just unbelievable. Minnesota. But I mean, they're laying the, they're laying the, forgive the anti pun groundwork for these flying yeah. cars. <laughs> they are. So if we have States enacting these laws, it's coming. Cause we know where all these laws come from. It's corporations. These guys don't do anything. Everything is handed to them. Here you go, Mr. Representative. This is what we want. Please pass it. Please right. and thank you. And also, right. here's a bunch of money to your reelection campaign, of and course. also a job for when you retire from Congress. Right. You'll be a you, you'll you'll be a consultant or a seat on the board. You know, it's an easy, nice two hundred grand a year. Yeah. God. <laughs> I mean, it just it's so sickening to. I know. I mean, if you get on five boards after you're uh, a politician, that's a million bucks a month. I'm sorry, a year, a million dollars a year. Just being on boards. I caramba. I know. So, you know, is it, why do we blame them? Anyway, uh, yeah. exciting stuff. Once again, I'm really excited to see all these rich people flying their cyber cars <laughs> uh, while I'm stuck on the fucking freeway. Um, we are at two hours, which is shocking. We've only gone through half. Um, I mean, the rest of the stuff is political things. Like, here's one for crooks. They found out that he has he had connections with people in the FBI because they tracked their cell phones, mm -hmm. and he was going back and forth. Not uh, this is this is from the Oversight Project, um, July twenty second. We found the assassins' connections through our in depth analysis of mobile ad data to track movements of crooks and his associates. I thought he didn't have this. any associates. Right. Oh, yeah. To do this, we tracked devices that regularly visited both Crook's home and place of work and then follow and followed them. Um, someone who regularly visited Crook's, Crook's home and work also visited a building in Washington, D.C., located in Gallery Place. This is in the same vicinity of an FBI office on June 26, 2023. Whose device is this? Oh, it's Joe Smith, who happens to uh, also work in Virginia. Isn't that, isn't that such a coincidence? Yeah, weird. Funny how that works. Another device linked to Crooks uh, visited Plymouth, Massachusetts. So there's another one that traveled. Wow. I, mean, I thought the guy was a loner. I thought, you know, he didn't have yeah, any help sure. or anything. Sure. We found a device linked to Crook's work that traveled to Butler, Pennsylvania on July 4th and July 8th. This device stopped all activity on July 12th, one day before the assassination attempt. Oh, weird. That's a funny coincidence. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird? Unless the guy was carrying around like with him like five phones and he was traveling across the country. Yeah, who knows? Um, I don't, oh, on August 30th, 2023, one device linked to Crook's visited Algeny arms i guess that's where he practiced or he bought or bought his gun uh, just judging on the guy's picture i can't decide if he was bullied too much or not bullied enough bullying is so wrong isn't it i mean it is but also i mean have you seen kids out there some kids need a good bullying yeah but maybe made it made them like that or maybe not i don't know yeah i don't know it's tough i mean i I was not bullied because I always took care of it right from the beginning, you know, um, but because I changed school, it's easy when you're the new kid, you know, mm -hmm. but I never, I just immediately would just lash out and be a crazy person and they'd leave me alone. And it's easy to get rid of a bully. I don't, just don't take it. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I mean, I was never, I mean, think I'm not trying to say I was a cool kid or anything, but I was never, I was never bullied. I was never in a position to be bullied. I mean, it helped. Yeah, I played yeah. sports, all, you know, my right, whole that life. helped too. So yeah, when, if you're good in sports, that's really a good one. I mean, I was great in sports too. That's that always helps, you know. You know, you're part of the cool kids. Yeah, and I also felt bad for the ones being bullied. I tried my best to protect them. You know, but I, I mean, maybe I was just blind to it. But I, I never, I don't remember seeing bullying. I mean, yeah, there's people who get get made fun of, but I mean, that's everybody. I mean, I definitely got yeah. made fun of. I made fun of people yeah. too. I don't yeah. know if that's, I don't know if that's bullying. It, it, you know, and by made fun of, I mean. You know, it's stuff. I think it becomes stuff, really but... bad when the entire class like starts laughing, kind of thing, right? You know, and that's yeah. and that's something I never, I never saw. Oh, I never, okay, I never well, saw okay. one person get ganged up on by the whole, you know, class. All right, that's important then. Yeah. Um. Then this this 
this map here is here's all the relevant locations within Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. There are linked to both Crook's home and place of work. So these guys really did some great work. JD Sharp, this is what. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so much weird stuff about Trump's assassination attempts that we're just never gonna know. It's the same. This is uh, yeah. you know, like the Vegas shooting. None of it, none of it adds up. It doesn't make any sense, and it's gonna get buried. It's already been forgotten about. I mean, we had uh, an assassination attempt on one of our presidential candidates, and no one. It's all about Kamala right now. No one, no one gives a shit. Oh my god! Wait, 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 wait you sent me one about. We got a ton of Kamala stuff. Um, Heal, you mean heels up, Harris? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's what I'm calling her from now on. Heels up, Harris. Oh yeah. So the, the media is just uh, here. We go. They are making a champion. They are making a candidate. Yeah, we're I mean, watching a candidate being being made in front of our eyes. It is if you, if you spend any time on Reddit, it's super obvious. It's obvious to me. I mean, I, I don't know if you know how Reddit works, but I have I have an account and like I'm subscribed to certain different subreddits. You know, things I'm yeah. interested in. But every other post now is from a subreddit that I'm not subscribed to or have any interest in. And it's all about how great Kamala is, all about how great Heels Up Harris is. And I'm like, why am I seeing this? This is not something I'm subscribed to or care about um, yeah. it's everywhere. And it's beyond Reddit now, as this post shows, you know, it's very obvious that, I mean, everyone remembers that uh, Heels of Paris was designated as the border czar. She yeah. was in charge of, I mean, it was an official statement. She was in yes. charge of the border. And it was now, announced by Biden even. Yeah. All of these. Yeah. Uh, news organizations are coming out and saying no 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 that never that never happened never happened it's just like how stupid do you think we are this is an example from a, a website of axios on the left is 2021 says heels up harris appointed by biden as borders are it's underlined there and then on the right same article 2020 not sorry not the same article same website 2024 yep. by axios it says she was never actually appointed the borders are yeah, yeah, <laughs> which she never actually had. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Everyone's uh, one of the big talking points right now is she's a DEI hire, and everyone's like, "No, she, no, that was never a thing, never a thing." But if you go out and, and find those videos from Biden, he said he specifically was going to nominate right. a, uh, a black woman <clears throat> as his vice president. She's not before going. Harris was even in, you know, in in talks about being vice president. But people predicted this will happen to them, and now they're in this predicament. It, there's no way she's going to be the nominee. I'm thinking she's not going to be the nominee. There's no way they'll switch her up by November, I think. Yeah, and this video highlights the border czar thing even better. "Quote yeah. unquote border czar." Vice President Harris was not a border czar. Meantime, Vice President and border czar Kamala Harris facing some backlash. What he said about Harris and immigration was not true. She was never appointed border czar. Uh, and this will be her first visit to the uh, U.S.-Mexico border region since she was appointed as the border czar by President Biden. People going to have to counter the misinformation. You already hear folks talking about the border czar. She wasn't the border czar. President Biden tapped Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris. Harris to be the border czar. Now, she wasn't the border czar. That's what Republicans uh, labeled her. They were very critical of Kamala Harris, especially in her role as border czar. Now what she's up against is folks lying about her border record, calling her a border czar. Kamala Harris, who was appointed as the border czar. The Biden team didn't declare her the border czar. They wanted her to work on kind of the root causes of mm -hmm. immigration. There has been so much criticism against Kamala Harris. You know, she was the border czar. Calling her sort of the border czar, uh, which wasn't necessarily the case. So the border Border. If they weren't planning to address it in a major way, do not make her your border czar. She met with some of the Northern Triangle countries, but nothing has effectively changed. Oh man, I love the internet how it just catches the media. That's why the media is dead because yeah, they can't I mean, cover that is, stuff up. I remember, you know, everyone. I remember when uh, Trump was running the first time, he was talking about fake news, and he got a lot of flack for it. But yeah. I mean, this is exactly why the term fake news came about. And it is fake news as we I mean, that is proof that the media actively lies. It's not, oh, we forgot that we said this. It's we know we said this, but we have to change right. everyone's opinion. So change we're going to say the, the narrative. Yeah. All yeah. about the narrative. That's all it's about. And what they want, they want uh, they, uh, what they want you to think like or or they how they want you to think. That's all it's about. 
Yeah, and I mean, it's just it's propaganda. Absolutely. Yeah, and very powerful propaganda. So, you know, after all that corruption, this is not a surprise that we are here. Interest payments on U.S. national debt will shatter $1.1 trillion this year, eating 76% of all income taxes collected. So oh, we're basically bankrupt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's $34 yeah, it's... trillion dollars now in debt, and it's going up by a trillion every, like, I don't know, a quarter. So imagine the interest. The interest is more than our defense budget. <laughs> Just <laughs> absurd. We're, we're paying private banks that much in interest. Isn't that just insane? It is insane. Uh, um, and then I guess, you know, this, this is good after that because since since that the system is collapsing, um, they want to replace it. And they're going to convince you to replace it. This, this whole debt-based currency system, they want it to keep going forever. So they do have a plan. You know, don't think they don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And we, people should, should be awake to it. You know, probably CBDCs. Um, and this is Whitney Webb. It's a much longer quote, but I'm sure she has some good. So if you don't participate in that system, as far as the state or the, you know, the private sector is concerned, you don't exist. So um, by not participating in that system, you're inherently excluded from the economic system and really essentially everything. It's going to be a problem reaction solution type of situation where they've already made the solution. They've already developed what they want to be uh, the new financial governance system after this new Bretton Woods mill. They just need some sort of big event on the scale of World War II or some large event that's, you know, equally disruptive in order to be like, all right, now it's time for a new financial governance system after this big event like they did after World War II. Mm -hmm. Today, we have investigative journalist Whitney Webb war has warned the world that ever owned and traded bribing or liking the video. One is essential to the other, uh, using words about, you know, this is inclusionary, um, sort of, you know, the whole... Um, I guess marketing behind digital ID is that everyone needs a legal ID because otherwise they're unable to access essential services, right? And so the idea is we all have to be included in the system and they directly link that to the concept of financial inclusion and banking the unbanked, which you brought up earlier. But inherently these systems actually function in, in an exclusionary way um, based on how they've been set up. You know, they have essentially said that this is the only way, this will be the only way to prove you have legal identity. And so, if you don't participate in that system, as far as the state or the, you know, the private sector is concerned, you don't exist. So um, by not participating in that system, you're inherently excluded from the economic system and really essentially everything. Um, so you have to onboard to the surveillance state or be excluded from everything. So it's, you know, being marketed as inclusion, but it's really inherently exclusionary. Totally. So how how does this system get triggered? How do, how does how do we move into the the Mark Carney ism? Well, I think they sort of give it away when they say that this is the new Bretton Woods movement that needs to be seized. So Bretton Woods was uh, what came out of World War II essentially, and was the creation of a new financial governance system after World War II. And this is essentially an effort to create a new financial governance system that was announced well before any sort of crisis like that. But it's probably going to need a crisis of that level. Uh, to be implemented and convince people to onboard at scale. And if you subscribe to the theory that all wars are bankers' wars, which there is um, plenty of evidence to support that, I, I would say, um, that seems to suggest that perhaps, uh, you know, the this is the pre, you know, it's going to be a problem reaction solution type of situation where they've already made the solution, they've already developed what they want to be, uh, the new financial governance system after this new Bretton Woods moment. They just need some sort of big event on the scale of World War II or some large event that's, you know, equally disruptive in order to be like, all right, now it's time for a new financial governance system after this big event like they did after World War II. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the thing that's so interesting about this like debt bubble exploding is that when you know that the debt bubble is going to explode and you want to explode it into the new system, the way that you sort of trigger that into the right the system that you want to get the masses to go with you is you actually want to have the most debt obligations on the record, like on the board, so that when the system pops, all they'll all pop. When the debt bubble pops, every debt bubble will pop. It will be it will be everything all at once. It won't just be like, oh, Japan's fine, the U.S. is like it won't work like that. Everything will pop at once. So in this weird way, you actually want to create as much debt as possible 
right before the the pin burst the bubble and then you can offer this hey we'll, we'll service your debt one to one if you come join this new universal tokenized ledger you know just sign up here do a selfie of your face and give us your biometric mark of the beast it's right there you know mm -hmm. it's crazy i mean i've been listening to this new guy <clears throat> i sent i sent you a clip of him archaics he's amazing i cannot believe i've never heard of him before um but he's got a great channel he, he talks about more esoteric way and he goes to ancient books and very well read um lots of sources that that, that he um that he references um but he goes to revelations and he says it is a script it's a complete script that they're going by um but it's also a decoy he says he says that they use they use actually greek um greeks greek um i don't know like sources as their real script and what they what they plan to do so you know it's crazy when you look at these events going on that it does all go back to quote unquote prophecy probably to gain acceptance by the masses because like oh see this is God's work in the world. And yes, this was prophesied. And yes, it's the Antichrist. And don't worry about it. Jesus will come down. And he's going to destroy the Antichrist. You know, so don't do anything about it. We're fine. But you know, you're in the know kind of thing. And it looks like, I mean, that's where this is headed, right? Yeah. I mean, look at China and their social credit system. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the U.S. government's wet dream. Um, you know, they want you to if you're caught jaywalking you can no longer buy food until you pay mm -hmm. your fine um if you're if you misgender someone uh your car won't start the next morning i mean that's <laughs> they want total and utter control over yeah. the american public and this is i mean this highlights the most probable way they're going to do it i mean they're going to go after money yeah, um, if, and when people are desperate and say the system does pop you know it's inevitably going to pop it can't keep going like this forever so right. it's going to pop and it could be that's the reason why they just keep printing and printing more oh let's just shovel it off to ukraine let's shovel it off to israel let's keep let's give the people checks let's you know put everyone on medicaid and just pile on the debt mm -hmm. because if this economy goes all economies go they're very intertwined with us yeah world. i mean the uh, you know for better or for worse the entire world seems to run through the u.s yeah. market it does yeah so if people are desperate and the system collapses and your wealth all means nothing and then they offer like what do you say one-to-one -one debt um that was also predicted that the antichrist will do that he'll forgive all debt i mean there it is you know it's just insane to see this stuff happening yeah it really and then but what do we do i mean unless you unless you have a ranch a pretty good ranch with you know good arable land and water and stuff like that you have no choice but to be in the system you know yeah 99.99 percent of humans will be in the system but even those yeah but, but then you have to be i mean if you do have that ranch and that water and you know that that land that you can work you'll be completely out of the system you won't even have internet like you can't get starlink and say oh i'll just you know live off right. the grid they won't let you because you're they don't let you pay for it. There's well, no and way they, to pay for it. They absolutely hate it. They hate people who try and get off, you know, yeah. get off the grid. They hate it. They make it absolutely impossible, you know, for you to do. Yeah. Look at the Amish. I mean, they're harassed constantly for their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the regulators go there and make them like throw away butter and milk. That's not up to regulations um, just because they're natural. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, well, it's ridiculous. shit, I mean, just, you know, even zooming out a little bit, uh, people in America, you don't, you can't own land anymore. There's, if you don't pay land on your, if you don't pay taxes on your land, it gets taken away. Something that you quote unquote own, um, right. you know, something that's completely paid off, but you still have to pay taxes on it means you don't own it, that you're renting it from the government. They design it this way. It's disgusting. Exactly. Yeah, if you don't make a payment, they can come and take it. Yeah, yeah, a physical a physical asset that they can, that's pure profit because they didn't do anything with that. They can just auction it off, mm -hmm. and whatever they get, they get. Yep, they don't care. <clears throat> yeah, it's travesty. Right. Well, I guess just get off the black pill. Uh, <laughs> now, I I love this idea. Uh, this is a tweet. Me too. From who's that? Kelsey McKinney. Yeah. And she says, I am yet again asking the Olympics to simply let 
<laughs> a regular non-athlete person do the event first so I can understand how good these people are. <laughs> that is such a good idea. I love it. <laughs> it, it. It's in line with my idea that we should have one person in the debates that's just your average Joe picked off yeah. the street. Yeah. should also get a platform i think this is a great idea this allows people to see how difficult these things are um it's not really making fun of normal people it's giving you perspective right, right? exactly like okay say it takes it takes a guy like this to run the 100 meters i don't know 20 seconds yeah so he does it in like eight or six i don't know what it is now how fast they go that you're like whoa okay that's really impressive yeah, exactly. I mean, when it's just numbers on a screen, you go, oh, eight seconds. That's, I mean, that's eight seconds. Wow, crazy. But right. like, if you yeah. see it compared to, you know, because un unless you're watching the Olympics and then going outside and doing them for yourself, which you're not, let's be, let's be real here. Right. Um, you, you have no idea what, what that looks like. <laughs> so I, I I love it. I think, and the picture they chose is great. Some fat guy have it yeah. in his hand. <laughs> totally. And then there's from uh, this, your this this old. hits a little too close to home, even for me. And I I consider myself a young guy. <laughs> I mean, no, but it's just funny what society does to you. you this know, is yeah, yeah. This is exact. I completely agree. This is from one of my favorite uh, YouTube channels, uh, Cracker Milk. They're they're Dude, really funny. These guys all the time. They're so yeah. funny. Very I love funny. Australians are hilarious. Yeah. All right. It's machine and how do you send a fax oh wait oh my god you're old i'm not old really oh, oh you do it. make a tick tock huh. make a clock do me a favor <laughs> read this oh oh you, i'll zoom in a little bit just a little bit. yeah just a bit a little bit more yeah just a bit what's that what's that that's an o. oh oh <laughs> oh my games banjo <laughs> yeah what's this one called that's a game boy what about this Game Boy Color? Are <laughs> both Game Boys, are they? <laughs> I bet you can't even get up without making a sound. <laughs> you all fucking beat the shit! Yes, Oh my god. That's a fax machine. I don't have a fax machine. Can I oh, borrow man. your fax machine? That's what that's what we missed in the beginning. <laughs> they don't let you uh, rewind, man. It's too bad. So so great. Um, I don't yeah. think I, I I believe I did use a fax because I I work for my dad on the weekends sometimes uh, when yeah. I was younger. But your I industry believe... works a little on faxes, doesn't it? No 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 no. Oh. God no. There's no Not such thing as a fax oh, okay. machine in, in my because I know. Industry. Well, okay, some doctors still do it for referrals and stuff. I don't even. I mean, I've had to get referrals from my doctor, and there's no. It's all through an app. No, oh, um, interesting. There's there's no fax machines there. I mean, yeah, it's it's funny f how f fax machines are. How Government still use like the IRS, I think too. Yeah, well, it's fax. We all know how great and efficient the IRS oh, yeah. is. Yes. Um, but I had a Game Boy Color growing up. Oh yeah, me too. I, I had the normal Game Boy, and then yeah, the Game Boy Color. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um and then he yeah he couldn't read that's hilarious <laughs> hey man old age is a real thing it is a real thing i i'm definitely getting i i you know i've got pains uh from all over my body from you know when i played sports i, br I broke yeah. my hand when i was 18 and uh it still swells up when it gets you know rainy outside uh my i've got a weird problem with my hip flexor oh, who knows no how many concussions I had and how they've affected me. Um, football is so bad, uh, so bad for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure. You know, if I had kids, I don't think I'd, I, you know, it's tough. Cause I, I love football. I think it's a great sport. Um, I mean, God, the, the, you know, just the team building in and of itself. I mean, my the oh, best friends like I it. have yeah. throughout my whole life have all been people I played football with because when right. you, you know, you bleed, sweat, and you cry next to someone who's bleeding, sweating, and crying. I mean, you yeah. form you form a bond. But yeah, you do God, it together. You win together. Your... You lose together. Yeah, it's so bad for your physical health. My but do you know? God. I didn't know this, but the, uh, soccer players have as as many yeah. concussions as football. Yeah, I did not know that. I don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but that's from heading the ball because it comes really fast. Like I used right. to hate heading the ball for that reason. I, you know, mm -hmm. I hated it. But yeah, that's it. Just rattles your brain. Yep. 
but obviously yep, football is yep, way yep. more violent. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Love it. Well, though. the Olympics, the Olympics is uh, started already. Well, it started on Friday, Friday? right? Friday. We uh, uh, could have done a whole episode on those in the um, yeah. in the in the Olympics. What's it called? Opening ceremonies. Opening ceremony. People were so pissed about that. I saw it all over the timeline that they're upset that there's uh, it disrespectful was very Christians. Weird. Yeah, all these all the trannies everywhere. Now I don't think you're allowed to say that. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get canceled scenes. now. Um, <laughs> well, you know, archaics. That guy sent you. He he. He, the night before, he wanted to take everyone through um, how the elite use these ceremonies to tell their their narrative. And he went through 2012, and he did other ones. And he was saying there's definitely going to be a terror attack, and the one in uh, uh, the one in Paris. Happy. And then you, yeah. And then you sent me, yeah, that article. Wait, where is it? Some uh, guy had uh, attacked the trains. Yeah, the trains. Wait a minute. Oh, here it is. Arson attackers targeted rail networks, nerve centers. French PM says as services slowly resume. But eighty thousand people. I thought it was more than that. I thought it was six figures. Affected. Oh, oh, sorry, eight hundred thousand. Yeah, real customers were affected. Pre-planned and coordinated, uh, the attacks were. Yeah. I, okay. So, where's the intelligence agencies? These uh, these acts of sabotage were clearly aimed at bringing the four arteries of the TGV network out from Paris to the rest hmm. of the country to a standstill, and to a large degree, they succeeded. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. Well. well, hopefully yeah. that's the end of it. Hopefully that's the end of it. I mean, it's not too big of a deal. You know, I don't think anyone got hurt or, or died. Right. Oh, and that's the fast train. Mm-hmm. 186 miles per hour. How come we don't have one of those, man? Um, because every time they try and uh, do a high-speed rail, um, it gets bought up by corrupt individuals who cancel the rail line. I mean, that's what happened here in California. Yeah, didn't, didn't they spend like ten, tens of billions of dollars? Yeah, they had a whole season of True Detective about it. <laughs> With the Is that the last one? Wait, which one? Season two. Season two is about the high-speed rail that was being... "Quote unquote built uh, through California and all the all the the land. Oh, that was in the back. Yeah, in the background. All the That's all right. the land got built or all the yeah, land yeah, got yeah. bought by rich people and then the the rail got uh, canceled. I don't know all the details, but right. But also, we're just we're first of all, people always fail to realize this when, especially Europeans, compare U.S. to countries in Europe. We're huge. We are oh, yeah. a huge country. We're yeah, we're we're, we're a continent." Yeah, I mean, that's why I don't know. Have you seen those people? Like I've, I've seen on Reddit a lot where people are like from Europe. They go, "Yeah, we land in New York City, and then we're gonna drive down to Miami, and then head on over to L.A., uh, <laughs> and then you know a week later we come back." It's like you couldn't do that in a week. Do you understand yeah. how big this country is? <laughs> yeah, I mean, driving. I mean, California alone. How big is California when you compare oh, it to European countries? It's I mean, huge. And if yeah. you're you're one of those fun people that had to drive from California to Las Vegas this weekend, hi mom. Uh, that whole route was completely shut down because of the lithium batteries that exploded. Yeah, um, so Eleven hours from from uh, California to Las Vegas. Oh, and boy. for those that were driving back right from Vegas to California or going from California to Vegas, got stuck for twenty four hours. Yeah, they couldn't move for a day. God, that's yeah. scary. in the middle of the desert. Now, this really isn't conspiracy stuff. This is just more. Um, yeah, I want to show the corruption of California. Once you right. start talking about that, yeah, exactly. California education official embezzled over sixteen million dollars, hid that's cash it. in mini fridge. Official Jump change. Today. Change. I mean, it's ridiculous because a lot of the problems we have in this country come from corruption, whether it's education or the healthcare system. And the answer, or homelessness is the big one right now. Yeah. And the answer from the plebeians seems to be, well, we just need to spend more money on it. Yeah, I mean, more we, government. Or we need to add more government to it. And that's just not, obviously not the case. It's not working. No. We need to systematically fix these things from top to bottom to make sure this kind of shit doesn't happen communities have to do it we can't outsource anything because when you outsource you give you away your authority and people just abuse that they always abuse that this guy took 16 million dollars i mean 
they, they seized seven point seven million dollars in property that they were able to trace. He had a home in Yorba Linda, 2021 BMW, 57 luxury designer bags, jewelry, and high-end tequila. I'm assuming this is a woman. High-end <laughs> tequila. Yeah, the bags. Look at the cash just in her fridge. Mini fridge. It's just on. I it's mean, sick. just it is. It is sick. You know, and people are always talking about how poor our education system is, and it's not due to spending. It's due to these fucking assholes who yeah. ruin it for everybody. I mean, and and you know, it's not. It's not just. Oh, was it? Uh, he was, was sentenced it? to 70 what? months in federal prison. Was he, uh, you know? Or... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they are, they do retain value, but you'd think he'd get watches. Yeah, brain. or maybe he was buying the bags for his wife. Yeah. Assuming he had a wife. I don't know. Look at this. Uh, prosecutors said that Contreras was, uh, was hired in 2006 and managed the fiscal operations <laughs> of the district, <laughs> where 81% school through sixth grade are classified as socioeconomically disadvantaged. I mean, he Good took God. complete advantage of that community. What he gets? He said he got seventy months, so that's what five years. He yeah, he could probably get jail, to keep some money. Yeah, jail for longer. Months. Ordered to pay almost seventeen million back, which he's not going to pay that back. Yeah, yeah, he just claim bankruptcy. You know, I mean, I mean, they'll take his house and his cars and those bags, but they're not. But they're not getting seventeen million dollars. No back. way. Lavish lifestyle, including purchasing Louis Vuitton. It's Louis Vuitton, bucks. you pleb. LVT, baby. Unbelievable. MSD. In his scheme, he wrote checks in small dollar amounts written to MSD with the letters spaced out. After receiving the paper signatures from others, he would fill in those blanks to spell fictitious names and increase the amounts of the checks and deposit them into his personal bank account at ATMs. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> No shame. Ooh, look at those bags with money in them. Okay, first of all, who posts those? I know, they're just bastards. They put the money who in there. That I mean, was obviously. Clever. Hey, we need no. to put this into evidence. Let's make sure we know who this is. <laughs> Let's fan out the money perfectly. Jesus. Uh, he pocketed 16 million. There it is. Unreal. Yeah, I mean, we need to we need to figure out. We, we, we have to take a look at the system that allows this to happen because yeah. this wasn't, if I remember right, this wasn't a one, he didn't just do this all in one afternoon. This is over the course of like 20 years or something. Yeah. And it seems always these people get rewarded. Yeah. You know, they love the guy. Obviously they, they hired him for this district because he had such a good track record of stealing. And that, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe he gave commissions for that. I don't know. Well, that's Jorge Armando Contreras. Contreras. That's mostly what we have uh, today. I'm. There are some things we skipped that we can probably save them for next week. I think. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it is we're we're sitting at two and a half hours, which is yeah. longer than we like to go. It's long, yeah. But we want to thank all of you for listening uh, to us here at the Uncovering Anomalies podcast. Uh, yeah. We, and we love hearing feedback from you guys. In fact, we got some feedback on YouTube. Um, in the, while yeah, I find those right. while I find those comments, <laughs> I would like <laughs> I have a need to know Adam to tell all of you great people where you can find us on social media. That's right, guys. Well, um, first of all, we have our support link under all of our episodes. So you know, if you like the show, you like hearing from us, you want us to continue to post episodes mm -hmm. weekly. You know, hit us up with some support. Buy us a cup of coffee or a vape or whatever it is. That we'll use that money for. I'm kidding. We'll put it right back into the show. But what? other than that, you can. Yeah, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> but you can find us on all major podcasting platforms. Um, we also have, you can, if you don't want to use the big guys and want to use like uh, a, a podcasting app, then you can just, you, just copy our RSS feed. And we should be in there anyway, but you can just copy our RSS feed and then. Uh, link it up that, that way. We're on YouTube. Check us out there. We're growing there. We're on Rumble as well. Hello, Rumble. We're on BitChute. Hello, BitChute. And Odyssey, still working on growing on that platform. But it's a great platform. They support great speech. No censorship whatsoever. It's on the blockchain. So whatever we create will be there forever as well, as long as the sun doesn't take out our infrastructure. Um, other than it. that, we're on, we're on X, and which is formerly Twitter. So 
the podcast account is UAP the podcast. That's the handle. I'm at Breakaway Civil, and Topher is at Topher It All. Awesome. So big ups to Monkey8464 with the yeah. profile picture. Uh, <laughs> love it. Thank you so much for your support. Also, commenting. Very nice comment. Yes, very nice comment. Very sweet. It really, it, you guys have no idea how much it encourages us, really. Another, yeah, another big shout out. Lawyer to, lawyer to Lifter. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to our really fun show. I was going to say <laughs> dumb, but I was like, you know what? Let's go positive. Really <laughs> nice. fun show. Like we really appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate your feedback. We do. And, you know, always feel free to give a shout out. Let us know what you want to hear. Let us know what we could do better. Um, absolutely give me some nickname ideas because i am running out <laughs> i mean yeah so what's the trick for you just it's got to be a lot of t's in there <laughs> that's right? it mostly that's it that's it <laughs> i don't funny. know where i don't know where the, the take it all came from but i decided <laughs> i want to take it all give it to me i want a little bit you. i don't want a little bit i want it all i take it all all of it baby so that is i have a need to know adam i am take it all the to fair Take a and and uh, this has been episode 82. Yep. July 28th, 2024. Awesome. Thank you all so much for listening. And we'll see you all next week. Next Uncovering week. Anomalies podcast.